You are now listening to the Q&E Podcast. Is this what you want? Huh? Is this what you want? I'm coming in again, damn What's up, everybody? You are listening to the Q&E Podcast, and you're here with your boy Q Hicks right now. And I got Edgar on the other line. Edgar, tell the people what's good. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Q&E Podcast. We got a lot coming for y'all on this episode. We got our Week 2 NFL Recap, where we're going to talk about some of the biggest moments from Week the biggest upsets, what we haven't um, seen positively from some of these teams, and some criticism we're going to give early in the season already. So we got that for y'all. We got entertainment, current events, past the arts. We got a loaded episode for y'all. Yes, sir. And before we dive into anything, we have to talk about it, especially when we're going to dive into our picks. If you are looking for anything betting wise, definitely go to BavadaSportsBook.com for all of your betting needs. And let's dive into NFL week two, like Eggert brought up earlier. And I, I don't know if you're feeling this way, bro, but it feels like a lot of teams are just getting exposed early in this season that we had a lot of high expectations. When you talk about the Raiders, the Colts, the, the Bengals, I don't know if it's just early season overreactions, but they're just not looking like the teams we expected to coming into the year, bro. Especially the Raiders and the Colts. It's like, damn, the Colts are in the AFC South, bro, where you're playing against the Jags and the Texans twice a year. Even though the Jags are improved, it's like, come on, bro. Y'all getting waxed and going through dogs fights with the Texans. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if that's just me, but I'm seeing a lot of teams getting spo- exposed early in the season. Yeah, and I don't even think it's too early to give that judgment because it's not necessarily that they're, that these teams are 0-2 or 1-1 or 0-1-1 in and, and the Colts and the Texans case and whatnot. But I think it's the way that these teams are losing, the way that they're just getting um, defeated right now. Like the Raiders, for example, um, to your point, I did not expect them to start the season off 0-2. Did I pick the Chargers to beat them? I think that was in week one. Yes, but I thought they would have got a dub in week two. They lost both weeks. But um, uh, another team, the Bengals, and and that was just a shot to me. Week one, I'm not going to hold against them that much because, yes, Mitch Trubisky is a quarterback, but it's Mike Tomlin, and it's a division rival, and it went all the way to overtime, and it was damn near anybody They had four interceptions and six sacks. How, what, what do and you mean you're not going to over his and head? They still, and they still somehow had a game-tying drive. Because the Pittsburgh the offense is trash, bro. That, no, they ain't got nothing to do that with that. Pittsburgh offense. Is, bro, you played against Mitch Trubisky and Cooper Rush in the first two weeks, and you couldn't get it done? What? It's That's not like you're going through a dog fight man. with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen the first two weeks, bro. You playing well, we Cooper like Rush and Miss Trubisky, bro. We can't act like this ain't the Steelers, bro. If anybody they can make a, a good team, team, if anybody can make a team snap, it's Mike Tomlin. He can have Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. He can have Patrick Mahomes. It don't goddamn matter who at quarterback. As long as they're at least somewhat average, Mike Tomlin gonna find a way to make sure this team win. So I, I can't just win. overlook the Steelers like that. If I'm the Bengals, I'm not overlooking the Steelers like that. I'm not saying you overlook them, but I'm saying that they, you can't lose to the Steelers with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback because they gave you so many opportunities. And this is why I said you can't lose to the Steelers because their offense is so putrid. Even with Joe Burrow throwing four picks and getting sacked six times, it was still a dog fight. If you play against any other team, you're getting blown out. So the fact that you lost to a team where you gave, you turned the ball over four times, you got sacked six times, it's still a dog fight. That's not a team that you should be on the same level with. And then you play against a team with Cooper Rush. They don't even have their quarterback. The team is in shambles. Everybody talking shit about him, throwing dirt on the Cowboys' name. And you lose to the Cowboys? Handy. Come on, bro. <laughs> it's, it's not a good I, look. It's I don't not care a what good that look. scoreboard said. I don't care what the scoreboard said. The Cowboys, like, really whoop they ass. The That's what I'm game. saying. <laughs> That That's score what I'm could saying. be close as hell. All they wanted to be. That was not a close game, honestly. If you watch, if you really sat and watched that game, it really and you crazy. can blame and you can blame the Bengals offensive line for sure. They're trash and they're terrible, but they were terrible last season, and we weren't giving Joe Burrow passes for that. Joe Burrow was still overcoming the the tribulations of the offensive line and winning games. So you lose into the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cowboys in the first couple of weeks. We gotta ask questions, bro. Especially when so many people were hyping up the office uh, offseason additions for the Bengals. This is what y'all doing? 
0 2 to the Bengals. It's not like you're playing Josh Allen and Mahomes, bro. You're playing some scrub, not scrub teams, bro, but middle of the pack teams, bro. Come on, dog. Mid- middle Ooh. of the pack teams with below average QBs. <laughs> exactly. But we're gonna talk about them a little bit later. Let's dive into the first topic I wanted to dive into, which was the Kansas City Chiefs, because we seen them in Thursday night football play against the Chargers. And it really was a back and forth game until the end when Justin Herbert ended up getting hurt. But the Chiefs are a team that ended up sticking out to me because they still have Patrick Mahomes. And he will always be the key cog that can overcome so many issues that the rest of the team has. Are they still the team to beat in the NFL because of number 15? I would say they're not the team as far as like the one team everybody is looking at to really just knock off at the moment. I would say that that would be the Rams just because the Rams recently won the Super Bowl. But in terms of dynasty, I think we crowned the Chiefs just this new dynasty. I think we did it too soon, bro. Because I want to say like a year or so ago, I just posed the question of, is the Chiefs dynasty going to end sooner than expected? Or I I said something to that degree or whether or not the dynasty even started yet. Because, yes, they have a Super Bowl. They've been multiple times at this point within the last five years. But I don't think we're seeing the level of dominance that we've seen with New England. I think we were just so quick to um, to pass that new dynasty hat on to someone. And the Chiefs were just looking like the team to do it for. But now, look. The Bills are looking like damn near the team to be in the NFL. Like, you got the Rams who just won the Super Bowl last year, so everybody going to want to get their jab at them just so they can say they beat the last year's champs. But then you got the Bucks with Brady. You got you got all these other teams that still have a fight to get the crown. So it's like, is it even really a dynasty if I can name three to four teams that's like really got a chance of knocking you off? Hold on. There was, a, even there in, was an extensive amount of time. In those years where New England was winning shit, there was some competition now. We're not supposed to say it's just supposed to be a cakewalk for Kansas City. It was no, some comp even in those dynasty cake- years for New England. It's not supposed to be a cakewalk, but I don't, I just don't feel that level of dominance with them. Like they, with New England, with their dynasty, you just knew that was the gold standard of the NFL for X amount of years. Right now, I don't know if the Chiefs are holding that same standard. Now, if they, let's say they get to the Super Bowl this year, win or lose, let's say they at least get there, and then next year they get close to getting there, and then the year after they get there, it's like, okay, we're going to see a repeated pattern over and over and over, especially last year with the way Mahomes kind of shocked everybody by the way he choked. Yes, Mahomes, it don't happen often, but it's like, damn. Like, this is supposed to be the new dynasty, and this new kid, Joe Burrow, come in, and them that got everybody questioning whether you like that or not. And then you lose Tyreek Hill, and then we was questioning in the offseason whether you like that. So we're raising a lot of questions for the same team we're ready to call the next dynasty. That's the only thing I'm kind of proposing. I'm not saying they can't be, but I think we got to slow down on just giving that new dynasty hat to someone. But this is the thing, bro. It's not too many quarterbacks that you can say have overcome Patrick Mahomes at this point, because we can rave about the Buffalo Bills, bro, and how good Josh Allen and how good that defense has looked. But have you beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoff yet? No. No. You still got to go through that man, bro. So we can say everything about the Bills, and even you brought it up before the season. The Bills can look as good as they want to in the regular season, but what are we grading them on? We're grading them on that playoffs. And I'm going to roll with the player that I have seen get to the Super Bowl multiple times and is a Super Bowl champion. So Patrick Mahomes, even with all the questions surrounding this team, number 15 is still playing for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they still have one of the best coaches in the game, and Andy Reid. So at this moment, the Bills look like the top team, but you cannot count out the Chiefs. And I feel like they're going to be underrated once again because we've gotten or we've grown so used to them. Even last year, it was like the same kind of way. They were, they were just under the radar. Nobody wanted to talk about them until late in the season when they started to get hot. And it's like, damn, they still had number 15 on their team. Like, why are they not getting this buzz? I just want you guys to continue to watch out for the Chiefs because they still have a good team and a lot of good pieces in place. The secondary, I feel like, is the biggest hole on this team. It's been a lot, a big hole for the past couple of years, honestly. But I feel like number 15 and Patrick Mahomes can overcome a lot of it. I think they still have the pieces to make shit shake. It was a good matchup with the Chargers in Thursday night football. But do not sleep on the Chiefs this year. I know we're looking at the shiny new toys. But always look at the things that are consistent, bro. Because what was Tom Brady? Even though Tom Brady was losing, 
and certain years when he was in New England, what was he? He was consistent. He was always getting to the conference championship or he was always getting to the Super Bowl. That's the same way we've seen Mahomes. So always follow the trends, you feel me? So I think the Chiefs will still have to be up there in a lot of people's minds, though. But I agree that the Bills right now are the team to beat. I, I would say, yeah, they're, they're up there. And, and that's why I want to say I don't want to just sit here and make it sound like the Chiefs just, like, have to get overlooked for these other teams. They're in the they're in the two to three team circle of teams that everybody wants to just knock off. I would say the Rams because they just won the Super Bowl. The Chiefs because they're the Chiefs. And whatever team Brady on right now, which just so happens to be the Bucks, And it's mm-hmm. not even a vendetta against the Bucks. It's just people want to just beat Brady whenever they can. So mm-hmm. I understand they're in that circle. And like you said, it's number 15 at the end of the day. And we, we got a lot of expectations for him this season. He's done a great job so far game saying look like i'm still that dude no matter what receiver y'all take away no matter what receiver y'all add i'm still that dude yeah i had a hiccup last year in the AFC championship i played totally uncharacteristic but that's not who i am consistently so i i, I agree with your point and on that's that. and, just, and that's another point i wanted to make about I just this don't team put that label on them too big too too soon too soon but this is the thing about the chiefs they always get better throughout the season so the end of the season is when they yeah. play their best football so you can question them because there was a couple of hiccups in this Thursday night football game because the Chargers do have a good defense. So it's one hell of a game. But they always play better toward the end of the season. I think this wide receiver core will gel better. He'll still have Kelsey, uh, the running back with uh, Jarek McKinnon and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I think that's a good running back duo. I think they will be fine. You still have to look out for the Chiefs, though, bro. I do not want them to fall by the wayside in a lot of people's estimations. And moving on to the next topic, I want to talk about a couple of pretenders, bro. We already talked about one a little bit in the Bengals. But the Las Vegas Raiders, what, what's been going on? That's your team. Huh? <laughs> that's huh? your team. <laughs> that is my squad, and that's why I'm questioning this so hard, bro, because I allowed the, the, the week one loss because you played a good Chargers team. But there is no reason you should have lost to the Cardinals when you were up 22 to 7 or however much you were up in that game, 23 to 7 or whatever. That was ridiculous play in the second half. Letting Kyler Murray do whatever he wanted to, running all over the place, throwing who he wanted to. He doesn't even have DeAndre Hopkins, and he was just tearing apart that defense. And the fact that Derek Carr with Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller couldn't score any points in the second half or overtime, that is a problem that we have to talk about. We can't let Derek Carr get these passes. And Derek Carr is my man, but I'm not going to let him get this passes off, bro. Whoa, whoa, I can't let him get this pass. Well, with, with this past week, with that game against the Cardinals, bro, Hunter Renfro is a big reason why they lost that oh, game. Oh, no, no, no. Two, for, but no, two, no, no. This is, this two is the key thing. Two key fumbles. No, for two sure. Two key fumbles. Sure. And he, he had a couple drops. That's not the reason they too. lost, though, bro. That's Devontae not the reason they lost. Shit. No, no, for sure. You can blame Renfro. But that's, that's one of those things where somebody tries to blame a single problem when there was a multitude of things that oh, yeah, went yeah, wrong. Yeah, it was because things, the game yeah. shouldn't have even been in overtime for right. Hunter Renfro to even fumble those balls, bro. It shouldn't even came right. to that. Y'all should have handled business in regulation. Like I said, with Darren Waller, with Renfro, and with, with uh, Devontae Adams, why are you not scoring any points in the second half? That's my biggest thing. I thought this offense was going to be explosive. You got Josh Jacobs in the backfield. Why are you not capable of scoring points, bro? It's not like you're playing against one of the greatest defenses of all time. You're playing against the Cardinals defense who just got dogged by the Chiefs a week ago. So it's not like you're playing this world beater defense. So what is the problem? I, I, I'm just I'm just not understanding, bro. I, I'm, I'm just not blown. I'm, I'm bro, blown, bro. That that is ridiculous, bro. I talked about it last week. I brought it up. Of we have to have the conversation on if Derek Carr can be a Super Bowl. Uh, get to, uh, he, if he can be a quarterback that can get a team to a Super Bowl, you have the talent, bro. It's on you to overcome and get them to that point, and we're not seeing it so far in this season. But do we have to give any testament to what Kyler Murray did? Yes, the defense yes, folded. Yes, oh, for sure. But, oh, for but sure. we, we got to give a hand clap to Kyler Murray because no DeAndre Hopkins. Like I think your number one wide receiver is A.J. Green, and is A.J. Green even a number one he receiver couldn't. still? Like I wanted to talk about AJ Green this. couldn't even catch the goddamn ball in that game. He, he, so he, he caught it when it mattered. He caught he yeah, caught he that did, one pass when it mattered. He did. <laughs> but the fact that AJ Green, who is still a stud now, AJ Green is still a, a good, a very good number two option. I don't think he's a number one, but the fact that AJ Green was your best receiving option, and you found a way to will this team 
back into the game and get this dub. I have to give Kyler Murray his credit, especially with everything during the offseason of people saying he ain't watching film, he ain't studying how he needs to. When you playing like this, bro, you damn near get a pass on watching that shit. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's actually, not, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's not something you can watch in film. That's not something you can study. That is pure instinctive football talent, bro. And I think sometimes, yes, studying is important. I don't want to make it sound like he just don't got to watch film. But it's certain shit you just can't study, bro. And that's some shit you cannot study how to be instinctive as a QB like that. I'm glad you brought that up, bro, because it's crazy. Because when they were down 23 to 7 at halftime, or whenever they were down 23 to 7, I seen so many people tweeting, oh, Kyler's so overrated because they just got waxed last week by the Chiefs. So everybody is bashing his name. But at the end of the game, everybody said, oh my God, Kyler's so great. He's a gamer. <laughs> I'm like, y'all was just trash talking this nigga a half ago. Like, come on, well, uh, how y'all really feel about this man for real, bro? But definitely salute the Kyler Murray, though. He played a hell of a game. Like you said, a lot of the plays that he made were literally off straight improvisation, bro. Off some off-kilter plays. He's, like, just running around until something opens up, until a player gets open or he's running in the end zone. So definitely major salute to the Cardinals for coming back and their resilience. But my biggest takeaway was those Raiders, bro. How can you not get the scores when necessary? How can you not just run the clock out and get the easy dub for the week? Time management and scoring, bro. Like, what is the issue with that? And you got an offensive coach in Josh McDaniels. He, he had some good offenses with uh, Brady in, in New England, even with Mac Jones last year. And y'all can make nothing shake with the talent that you have? And that's why I got to ask the question, are they pretenders? Can we put this pretender tag on them two weeks into the season? I don't know, bro. Because honestly, we were talking about the the fact that their division is gonna be so tough, bro. That's what like, I'm no saying. Matter, and you got no off to an 0 two record, start, though. No, no matter what the record looks like, like you're in a you're gonna be in a tough predicament regardless. But this is what I'm saying. Division. But so can, saying, can you be a pretender because you could be the fourth best team in that division and still be better than a lot of other teams? So at that point, for sure, are you really for sure, a for sure, for sure, for sure. For That's sure. why this is hard. That's a hard but, question. But my point is, you off to an 0-2 start, and you lose into a team that you shouldn't You shouldn't have lost to the Cardinals, bro. You should right. be 1-1 one right. One right now. So dropping games that you're not supposed to drop is going to bite you in the end, bro. And we were looking at the Raiders like Super Bowl contenders going into the season. Yeah. Or at least I was. I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but I, I, I was looking at them deep, like Super Bowl playoffs. Yeah, playoffs. Yeah, I was looking at the Raiders like Super yeah. Bowl contenders coming into this year. So that's where my standard is for the Raiders and the Bengals. Are they Super Bowl pretenders after what we see in the first t- couple of weeks. I would say, yeah, Ra- Raiders at the moment, yes. Bengals, I don't know, bro. I, I trust I trust Joe, bro. I don't know why, bro. I trust <laughs> Joe. This, this is funny because these two teams, I got a two-hour Wednesday for these two teams. I can still answer this question, though. Um, I would say no for both. Right now, we got a lot of criticism for both of these teams, but I will say right now, I will not label them as pretenders. But it, it could go either way. Right now, I think it's too early to call them that, though. This is what I would say, bro. Because losing, like I said, losing a game like that with the Cardinals is a game you shouldn't have lost. And I, I, the point I was trying to bring up is that you just can't lose games like that because you're already in the toughest division in football, bro. You right. can't just be dropping games because... My nigga, you got to peep up with Patrick Mahomes, Herbert, and, and Russell. Not really the Broncos. I've seen the Broncos play this past weekend. Y'all shouldn't be worried about them. But the other two teams I just named, you got to worry about being well, a shit, dog. You got to worry about teams. them if they end up winning majority of their schedule. Yeah. Whether, whether you're playing them or not. Like, because you only got one more. Well, no, nah, they got to play them twice. They ain't play them yet. So, so the games you play them against, you may not have to worry much, but you got to hope they don't win the rest of their schedule for real, which they might be able to do if, even if it's low scoring, even if it's ugly, a dub is a dub. So, and this is this is what I say: it is early in the season. I still think the Raiders will bounce back, and I don't know if it's just my my faith in Derek Carr that he will make something shake because I I really want to believe that he is capable of being that quarterback can ri- that can rise to the occasions. Because he just took a team that didn't have a number one wide receiver and took him to the playoffs. You get a you get the best receiver in the league and you can't take him deeper than that? Like, I just believe that he can. So I would say the Raiders will get better throughout the season. So I don't want to put the pretender tag on them. But for the Bengals, I think the Bengals are pretenders, bro. 
I think they are pretenders for this year. Like I said earlier uh, last week, I think they're going to have, I thought they were going to have regression coming into the season. And looking at this team, the offensive line issues, it's not looking good. And losing your first tough couple of games to Cooper Rush and to Mitch Trubisky, no matter how good the defense is for Pittsburgh, I got to look at you crazy, bro. I got to look at you crazy. This ain't the same team from last year. And you know what I'm saying? I, could they get better? Yes. But the offensive line, unless we get a major revamping, it's always going to be the offensive line. It's always going to be trash. Huh? That's something that we just got to keep up. But I think they are pretenders for this season. And moving on to the next topic, I got Dolphins come back on the Ravens. Is this Tua's revenge season? So we see one masterful performance by Tua in the fourth quarter and in the second half of that Ravens versus Dolphins game. The, uh, the Ravens were up 35 to 14 going into the fourth, and Tua just had them boys storming back within like 12 minutes to have them actually win the yep. game against Lamar Jackson. So, Edgar, how do you really feel about the Dolphins at this point? How far do you see them going, and how do you feel about Tua at this point, too? The Dolphins have the fastest wide receiver duo in the NFL, and it's not even fucking close. <laughs> like, oh, no. Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, bro, they're going to be a problem this whole season. That's going to be the Bills' problem in that division the whole season. They're going to have to watch every Dolphins game, making sure they got a game plan for these boys because I think they got a chance to really see them later down the road when it comes to playoff time. But – Outside of that, Tua, as far as a revenge season, I say yes, you could call it that because is he going to have a six-touchdown performance every week? No, even as amazing as this wide receiving duo is, even as great as their defensive secondary is playing, I don't see six touchdowns every week. But what I do see is consistent throws, consistent completions, and at least scoring 21 to 28 points a week. They might have one of the highest scoring offenses this season. And I, I had a question about that of um, who do you think's off? Who do you think has the more exciting offense right now, the Bills or the Dolphins? Oh, give me the Dolphins! The Dolphins. <laughs> Ten times, even even with Josh Allen playing for the Bills, I said it before. Like this is the most Alabama system that Tua is ever going to play with. You got yes. Waddle, who you played with in college. You got Tyreek Hill. You remember when he was playing at Alabama? It was uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle. You had Jerry Judy. It was nothing but speed all over the field. This is basically what this Dolphins team is with Tyreek and with Waddle, with Gasecki, with Chase Edmonds. This is basically what we're looking at. That's why I said this was such a do or die season for Tua because they gave you all the weapons you need to succeed, bro. It's really on you to step up to the plate. In the first half, he looked shaky. He threw a couple of picks. But in the second half, that's when I seen the real Tua because I think he realized something in that second half, bro, that everything doesn't have to be on his shoulders. You have the playmakers. Just get the ball out of your hands and let them make plays, bro. That's what you need to focus on. As long as the ball is getting in their hands, they're going to make something shake. Like you said, they're the fastest wide receiver duo in the NFL. They're going to make uh, somebody miss. They're going to break a tackle and go for 40 yards. That's just the type of players that you're playing with, so you got to get the ball out of your hands. I mean, in the during that comeback, they were just like one-play drives where he's throwing deep yeah. touchdowns to Tyreek Hill and to Waddle. Like, that's the type of play that the Dolphins should be having the whole season. Nobody can contain them when you have speed all over the field. So it's really on two of the step up to the plate, and we see something click in that second half. Oh. So I think this will be a big season for him. And if this going to be his revenge season, bro, you know what that means for your trade? That shit is not happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that shit oh, okay. is not happening. That. Oh, you talking about that. You talking about that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up something else for Two Wild Wednesday, too. I'm going to bring up something else for playing Wild like Wednesday. this all season. That shit is not going to happen. Whoa. I want to speak too soon. Nah. I want to speak too soon. Because, look, even if Tua got a crazy season, Am I taking him over Lamar? If, if Lamar, if if, <laughs> if if Lamar is available, Lamar, I'm taking Lamar, bro. I'm sorry, I'm taking Lamar, bro. I'm still taking Lamar because of the dual threat ability. I'm still taking know, Lamar, bro. bro. Because will that offense work, bro? Like I don't yes! even know if that offense Lamar can sling that shit too. On paper, it'll work, but when it comes to really watching the game. Nah, is Lamar bro. going to? I'm really not gonna be, let you do that. I'm not Lamar gonna let you really get that shit off. I'm not gonna let you get that shit off, bro. 
I'm not going to see a, that shit off. We will see a lot of empty routes by Tyreek and Jalen. Oh, I'm not letting you we'll get that shit off, bro. Well, damn it, forget about it. I'm not them letting two. you get that shit I off. I promise you. I promise you. I'm not letting you get that shit off, bro. Fuck no. This team, this team will be even better with Lamar. Are you crazy? Imagine all that speed and you add a running quarterback like Lamar Jackson to this team. Who's stopping that? I mean, it's going to be triple speed options with Tyreek and Waddle and Lamar. <laughs> like, that offense could be so OP. Like, it's so much creative shit that can be done if that is uh, if that trade was to happen. But for right now, we're going to look at the team as what it is. They got Tua. Tua look good. So I'm going to just roll with this team. But but they got Lamar as OP. But Tua, I think this is going to be Tua's revenge season, bro. Big season. Like I said, I got something I want to bring up for two wild Wednesday that's going to be really spicy. But uh, I, I think it's gonna be a big year for Tua. But flipping this to the Ravens' point of view, this is this is a bad L, bro. Up thirty-five to fourteen, Lamar Jackson was looking great all the way into the fourth quarter, and then they only get a field goal during this run. It's like I see people blowing, blaming Lamar for this loss. I wouldn't really blame the, Lamar. He put up thirty-eight points. It's just that defense is terrible, bro. Their cornerbacks. I mean, Marcus Peter was getting burnt. Marlon Humphrey. I mean, these are Pro Bowl, All Pro corners. Getting toasted, you feel me? And that and it just didn't make any sense to me. You can blame everything else on that defense, but that this defense was why, that secondary was terrible. This is why my Saints trade was not that damn crazy. If you add Marshawn Lattimore to that not, secondary, nobody want move, that trade. The Ravens don't want that trade. Move Marcus Peters over to um, what you call it? Uh, have him play uh like a free safety or some shit like that. Put Marshawn Lattimore a corner. That should be straight. Then you got James. Why, why do you want him on the Saints? That's his team. No, I, I don't I, I, think he works out with. I don't think he works out on the Saints. You got Michael Thomas. I don't you think got he Jarvis works out on the Saints. Bro. You got Alvin Kamara in the backfield. That shit would be scary. And you got um, you got Chris uh, your your boy uh, Chris um, I be forgetting how to pronounce his last name. That Chris shit, Olave. Yeah, Chris Olave. That shit's scary, bro. I'm to and, and you got to think about the division, bro. The Falcons are trash. The Panthers are trash. If you're looking at it from a Bucks perspective, once Brady gone, the Bucks have a QB questionnaire um, that need to be filled out at that point. So that's why you should be having them solid. going, boy. No, I'm, I'm just saying, like the trade that make the most sense. Cause I feel like we'll lose a lot if we trade Lamar. Cause <laughs> once Brady, once Brady walk, we will have to give up like three players nah. and, and a hell of picks to get this nigga. Which you would, help but them in the end, essentially, you would. Yeah, I feel like the Bucks would do that, especially after going off of uh Brady. You just can't go to no Kyle Trask and some rookie after Brady, bro. You gotta go to somebody that has some why type not? of resume on them. Why why not go with the young QB that has some promise who top old trust and you had two full years Who's, under the goat? How does he why trust him? Nigga that? ain't played in no real games. How does he trust him? He trusts him to first off keep his ass on the roster. You got trust in him enough to still keep bro, him on the Y'all niggas got Blaine then, Gabbert on the roster, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, what trust that, 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 like no, no trust needs like, to be involved there. You got trash ass niggas like Blaine Gabbert on the roster. I don't want Blaine Gabbert on the roster, period. But the fact that <laughs> he is, is to prove my point of down. Like, if they keep him Blaine, all I got to do is not suck worse than him, and I'm still on the team. <laughs> so, clearly, he's doing better or just as good as Blaine Gabbert. And then he played majority of the preseason. He got way more snaps than Blaine Gabbert in the preseason. Todd Bowles knows that is the next quarterback. Will I be mad if Lamar gets traded? No, I do like Trask. I want him to succeed in a Bucks uniform. But if we get Lamar, I ain't going to argue that. But I think the Saints trade is perfect because I feel like they have everything else in place. Their defense is stout. They got Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, Jarvis Landry, and Michael Thomas. The offense is weapons galore you still would keep Taysom Hill to have whatever other option plays you can do or whatever wildcat offenses they need to get rid of that nigga. just makes sense bro they just make sense hashtag Lamar's a dolphin all right we're moving on to the uh NFL week three preview bro so we're moving forward with the games of the week and for picks of the week hey how your picks been looking so far man what director what your record is so far I think I'm like what the hell am I? I'm not winning. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh I'm 15 and 17 right now. Shit wow. I think me and Edgar both tied at 15 and 17. Looking rough. We in a pool of seven at this point. I think the, the top person is like 18 and 14. It's yeah, Derek and Taz 18 and 14. And then 
uh, Caleb is 17 and 15, and then the rest of us are 15 and 17. Yeah. We still got time, though. I'm not tripping. I'm about to get my picks right. Because I see the teams that's starting to become pretenders to me. Like the Colts. I don't know if I'm picking the Colts the rest of the year. Like, it's, you all, it's, know it's starting funny? to become clear. <laughs> this is the worst I think we've ever started off with this shit, bro. Like, I don't, I don't think, think we've worst. ever started off this. Yeah, this, this is the worst. I don't think we've ever started off below below, below 500 after week two. I don't think we've ever started mm, off that. That's bad. true. That's true. <laughs> that's what I'm we saying, because this team's getting exposed, over. bro. We'd we be at least one game over 500. But no, nah, for sure, for sure. Below 500 I, I right now, I, agree I don't that. think I've ever had. I'm going to be back, though. I'm going to be back above 500 after this week. After this week, oh, I'm yeah. going to be back above 500. I'm gonna yeah, be back. I'm, I'm playing. I'm this. slipping the first couple. I'm gonna be back though. I'm winning this year. Derek, Derek for the slip. I don't think Derek oh, doing this on purpose. His his Derek pride is gonna take over. He's gonna end up picking the yeah, Eagles a little too the Eagles. much, and that's gonna slide his ass down. So yeah, for sure, for sure. He's gonna pick the Eagles a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, man. Gonna, so we diving into the NFL. Go no, no bullshit. Rant. That's how they gonna end up. He gonna get a little too confident. He gonna talk about Super Bowl and end up losing, losing like three in a row. For sure, for sure. All right, man, we're moving into the NFL Week 3 preview. So a couple of games for this week. Looks like games of the week. We got the Bills versus the Dolphins. We have the Raiders versus the Titans. We got the Ravens versus the Patriots. An interesting matchup to me, at least. The Jaguars versus the Chargers. I know y'all probably like the Jags for the get dog, but I... I might that, don't do that. I, I, don't I, I, do that, I might do something freaky right now. I might do something don't freaky do on that. that pick. I might do something freaky with that. And everything do else that. looks kind of man. I mean, you got the Rams versus Cardinals, but after that, I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of man games. Uh a yeah. game that'll probably be close but might not be exciting is Monday night football, that Cowboys Giants game. Yeah. And shout out it, to the Giants be, too. It'll be interesting and it'll be close, but I don't I don't think people will just be running to watch it. Oh my goodness, bro. If the Giants win that game, you don't even want to see New Yorkers if they go 3-0. Them boys was going crazy after they won their season opener. That shit was ridiculous yeah. to me. I was like, y'all don't understand. Like, you can tell they, they're a poverty franchise when they're they going crazy. <laughs> like you can tell they've been going through the bottles when they was oh, cheering a season <laughs> opening win. But if they go 3-0, they're going to be screaming Super Bowl. I don't care who their quarterback is. They're going to be screaming Super Bowl if they go 3-0, bro. I, I promise you. I think, um, I think this past Sunday was the first time since, like, the late 2000s that the Yankees, the Mets, the Jets, and the Giants all won on the same day. Damn. Shout out to the Jets, too. Because I yep. told y'all about them Jets. Them Jets was going to be better than them Patriots. We still no, got a whole no, season to no, go. No, nobody believes in Joe Flacco. We still Flacko. got a whole season to go. <laughs> I told y'all them Jets were good. And the Jets ain't even got their quarterback yet. We finna be straight. We finna be straight. All right, man. Let's start off with the picks of the week. Thursday night football. We got Steelers versus Browns. Uh, I got the Steelers, bro. That defense is crazy. Mika Fitzpatrick been going wild. So I got the Steelers. It's not going to be close. This is a five-point spread on Bavada. I'm not rolling with the Steelers defense, or the Steelers offense, man. I picked the Steelers last week, and their offense let me down once again. Yes, the Pittsburgh defense is great, but their offense is not going to score enough points, and that's what I'm worried about, so I'm rolling with the Browns. Next game, we got the Bengals versus the Jets. Uh, Bengals versus Jets. Damn, Bengals 0-2, so they need this dub. But the Jets somehow, some way, Joe Flacco Jets got this nigga. The Jets yeah. Wow, I can't believe I'm thinking about this. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go I'm with going the Bengals, bro. Yeah, y'all about to say Joe, Joe ain't going zero and three now. <laughs> Joe ain't going zero and three. That shit ain't happening. I got yeah. Bengals. Yeah, I got the Bengals minus five. They finna bust the spread on Bavada for sure. Bills versus Dolphins, probably the game of the week. Ooh, Five and a half point spread on Bovada. Ooh, that game at one o'clock. Damn, that game. That should have been like been a s- um, four o'clock game. They got to get better at flexing these games because it's no way that the Dolphins and Bills should be one o'clock and 49ers versus Broncos should be Sunday night football. Bro. Come on. And Cowboys versus Giants. Come on, bro. We got to start flexing these games better. Yeah. Uh. Damn. I just I had just asked you that question too. Who got the better offense, Stephon Diggs 
Looking like the best receiver in the league right now. I told you a couple weeks ago, too. Man, that man's top I'm three. Still, bro, I he told can, you he that man's top shit. three he right now, bro. Shit, but I'm not rolling, bro. I told I'm you, Stephon D is top three right now. He might. Told after he two weeks, five. he after he two weeks, five. he might be number one right now. He top y'all five, y'all know how I am about my boy Mike. Y'all know how I am about Mike. Let me call Marshawn Lattimore. Mike is out the game. Calm down. Damn, who, who, who you got? Bills or Dolphins? Damn. I'm going to go with I, the Bills. Two ain't, two ain't doing that against Tredavious White and them boys. Yeah, I'm going to roll with Oh, yeah, Miller's going to have that boy head. Look yeah. Because there's still some offensive line questions about the Dolphins. I'm going to go with the Bills for sure. Uh, Chiefs versus Colts. Uh, Chiefs. Chiefs blowout. Eagles versus Commanders. Eagles. Eagles for sure. Lions versus Vikings. You want to talk about your mans? You want to talk about oh, your yeah, mans? Hey, let me, let me tell y'all. Hey, no, let me get this shit off. Let me get this shit off. Because y'all should have seen this nigga at one o'clock trying to talk shit about my nigga Jameis. Oh, Jameis doing his same old bullshit. But that nigga was quiet when that nigga Captain Kirk was throwing three picks on Monday night. I didn't hear a peep from this nigga. I said, oh, I see how he do. <laughs> it was actually like four. It was like four Captain, Captain Kirk, Kirk or for James? <laughs> Captain Kirk. They were oh, both of them. What you talking about? <laughs> no, no, I think they both threw three. They both threw three. It was about the same stat line for both of them niggas. <laughs> it was about the same stat line. But I was like, look uh, at this nigga. It was quiet, but it was all talking boy, shit. For one James thing about kicks. Captain Kirk, boy, once you give that boy a nickname, he's going to tell you why he don't deserve it. Fact. Every time, boy, every time. He don't even deserve his receiving core right now. Um. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna go with the Lions though, bro. I, I've been telling y'all the past two weeks now the Lions is like that. They may I got not a two hour Wednesday about them. They better not have a great record this year, but shit, them boys gonna scare everybody every time they play. So I got the Lions. I'm picking a lot of road teams. I disagree with one of those statements that you said, but yeah, we're gonna talk about the two hour Wednesday. I'm rolling with the Lions too. I'm rolling with the Lions on this one. Raiders versus Titans and Lions plus six on uh, plus six on Bavada, bro. I, I think that's the lock of the week. Lions plus six. Damn, Raiders versus Titans. That's going to be an ugly one, I think. I'm wrong with the Raiders, man. I'm, I don't believe in the Titans at all. I love Tanny, but I'm, nah. I'm going to go with the Titans. I think Derrick Henry going to get out of this slump because he's been quiet as hell the first two games. <laughs> I wanted, I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. I'm going I'm to go with um. I'm gonna go with the Titans. Derrick Henry probably going to touch 200 for the first time this season. Because everybody was trying to talk about the Tanny on Monday. It was like, your man, the best running back in the league. <laughs> he only had 25 yards on 13 carries, but all right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm rolling with the Raiders, man. I like my Raiders to bounce back, bro. They got to show me something. If they go off to 0-3, yeah. we got to start having conversations of if they'll make the playoffs or not, bro. For real, for real. Ravens versus Patriots. Mm. Damn, that's another hard one. Damn, I got the I'm Ravens. Oh, shit. I'll go with the Ravens. Saints versus Panthers. Saints. Saints for sure. Uh, I wanted to say this on the pod so I can have this on wax. I'm completely off this Baker Mayfield bandwagon. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. (laughs) I I, I can't defend this man anymore. I I, I was rooting for him coming into the season. I wanted him to bounce back. But after looking at that Giants game, that man is just not good, bro. He's just not good. You can have McCaffrey, DJ Moore, a couple of weapons on this team. He's not going to make it shake, bro. Like, it's man, it's like he feels like he's just so scary in the pocket. They were giving him time to throw the ball, and he's just over there just looking to run and shit instead of, like, sitting in the pocket waiting until somebody gets open. Like, he's just too jittery for me, bro. So I'm completely off this Baker Mayfield bandwagon. Yeah, I got the sense. I, I, I can no longer support this man. So I, I am also <laughs> hey, off of the Baker Mayfield you, bandwagon. Hey, you're saying that shit like he got arrested or some shit. <laughs> He said, I can no longer support that nigga. <laughs> you said that shit like he got arrested. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Saints minus three on Bovada. Texans versus Bears. Ew. <laughs> no bull. <laughs> Damn. I picked the Bears against A-Rod. Dumb ass shit. I should have never did that. A lot what? of y'all picked the Bears too. Yeah. Um... 
damn, I really don't know. I don't know anybody on the Texans roster, bro. <laughs> At the fuck all. I swear to God, I'm not lying to y'all. I don't know anybody on this damn roster. I'm rolling with I'm the Texans, I'm going to the Bears, bro. bro. I'm going to go with the Bears. I'm rolling <laughs> with the Texans, bro. I'm rolling with uh with Lovey Smith. I like Davis Mills and Brandis Cook. Brandon Cook. And you do know somebody on that team. Damian Pierce was a uh, running back for Florida. He didn't uh, start a running back now. I meant like. And like number one option. No, the, he like, had the number one option though. And and that says a lot. Like, <laughs> so, oh, uh, shot shot the Pierce. That's, shot the Pierce. that's no. That's why. That's another reason, bro. Why I wanted to talk to you about uh Dan Mullen because he had niggas like Damian Pierce who are starting in the NFL. Like Damian Pierce was damn near like a backup third string running back for us. It's like yeah. we had him when he started in the NFL. He didn't even play for us. Damn near. Well, we Dan had Mullen. We had Tony everywhere on the field, like so. Pierce, I'm talking about running back. Pierce, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like when when Tony was when Tony was playing the slot, yes, we had Pierce in a lot for um for running back. But there were a lot of times we had Tony in the backfield. Why? I don't fucking know. It didn't make sense. But yeah. So ah, I'm just glad Dan Mullen is gone. Even if Florida is struggling, (laughs) I'm just glad that man is gone. But I'm rolling with the Texans. Jaguars versus Chargers. Chargers. I don't know why you said this was going to be a good game. I'm getting freaky with this game. <laughs> I'm going with the Jaguars, bro. I think they have a lot of confidence coming off that Colts win. I think this is going to be a... We go... <laughs> I'm going to call it now. We going to have some freaky takes about the Jags next week, bro. If they pull this shit off. We going to have some freaky takes. All that shit y'all talking about the Chargers? And also, your man ain't fully healthy because they about to shoot that nigga up with everything I be proving and all the damn <laughs> sedatives to have him play on uh, Sunday. J- Justin Herbert ain't even hurt without the rib injury. Give me the Jags, bro. Even if he does play, that defense going to be on his head. I got the Jags. If Trevor Lawrence outmaneuvers Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack and throws over Derwin Wing, oh, Man, look, we gonna have some freaky takes next week. That's I will, what I'm I will, you. I will shut the hell up next <laughs> on next recording if he do some shit like that. I'm telling you, bro, it's gonna be some freaky takes. I got the Jags, Falcons versus Seahawks. Ew, <laughs> it's a lot of ugly ass games. Uh, I'm, I'm never picking Atlanta though. Seahawks. Give me the Seahawks. Yeah, give me the Seahawks. I'm, I'm never picking Atlanta. If anybody is playing Atlanta, please just give me whoever is playing <laughs> against Atlanta. <laughs> All right, Packers versus Bucks. Uh, I got the Bucks. We ain't got Mike, and that's gonna be tough. But I, I signed Cole Beasley. I seen today. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a big deal. He's a he's a solid receiver. I don't, is, is Julio gonna play? Like I don't know. If Julio playing? Up? Mike I is definitely. Don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if Julio gonna play this week. I hope he do. Shit. That nigga Brady finna be throwing to himself at 45. That nigga <laughs> finna be... That shit but, finna but we be need, disgusting. We need people to step up, bro. Like, Perriman stepped up and helped us win the game, so I'm glad he did that. But I need Gage to step up. Scotty Miller was dropping a lot of passes on Sunday, which is very unlike him. If mm. anybody can be clutch, it's that man. So he was playing very uncharacteristic on Sunday um, against the Saints. So hopefully they get their act together this week. Hopefully Brady cuts them out, do whatever he needs to do to get them back in shape. But the addition of Cole Beasley with Scotty, Perriman, and them boys, it should be enough against the Packers because the Packers are solely leaning on A-Rod at this point. So I feel like we should win this game. So It's kind of tough for me, bro. This is one of them games that can go either way for real. It's a minus two spread on Bavada going in the Bucks' favor. I want to trust Brady, but I think the Packers have more options, to be honest, man. Lazard is coming back. They oh, look pretty I, good I against the Bears. defense lock them rookies up. I defense for the terrorize them rookies, bro. Please, uh-uh. And what, you, what, what y'all receivers going to do to, with the Packers, though? I trust our receivers versus their defense versus their rookie receivers versus our veteran Pro Bowl defense. I'm telling you, bro. We probably going to have three. a going to throw probably about three picks on Sunday. I'm telling you right now. Nah, nah you're right. You're right. Damn, that's good shit. That's good insight. That's the book. I'm going to roll with the books. I'm going to roll with the books. Let's see. Our defense going to carry us this whole year. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that. For now. sure. Our defense is carrying we us. We've seen that on, on Sunday on Sunday night, yes. too. We've seen that. Rams versus Cardinals. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. All right. That's a good L. 
All right, 49ers versus Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said about the Raiders, and we saw what happened. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> who said that about who? <laughs> I said, like, you said that with the Raiders game, and we see what happens. <laughs> no bullshit. Uh, 49ers, uh, 49ers versus Broncos. And Broncos. Uh, hey, Jimmy G said, give me my damn job, man, boy. I'm going to say, right. I got that for two hour Wednesday. I got that for two hour Wednesday. What? I would go with um damn. I trust Russ at the crib. I'll give it to the Broncos. Hell no. I seen the Broncos play the past couple of weeks. Them boys are trash on uh especially on offense. They defense pretty solid, but offensively, bro, how they're making nothing work with the weapons that they have. Honestly, they should just give the ball to Javante Williams. This man is getting like five, six yards of carry, and they don't want to run the ball and give him the ball in the, the passing game. And Russ ain't making shit shake with the offensive line and with the receivers that he has. And the receivers keep getting hurt. I think Jerry Judy got hurt this week. So now all he got is Cortland Sutton and uh, Hamler now. So the receivers are falling by the dozen. I'm rolling with the Niners. And they got Jimmy G back. Jimmy G, like I said before, he always wins, except in the playoffs. So I'm going to roll with 49ers. Cowboys versus Giants. Uh, Giants. Them boys going to start 3-0. and I, When was the last time the Giants started 3-0? and 2012, probably <laughs> when they went to Super Bowl. Damn, shit. Yeah, I'm going with the Giants. I'm going with the Giants for sure. I'm definitely going with the Giants. That's a two and a half spread on Babada too. I think they blow out the Cowboys, bro. I don't even think it's close. I really don't. All right, moving on to college football week three recap. We have the biggest game of the week was the Texas A&M versus Miami game. But to be honest, y'all, that game was a snooze fest. It's crazy. I was in Houston. I could have went to this game, but somebody ended up talking me out of it. I was an hour away from College Station, bro. I could have went to this game, bro. Because I was so hyped. Because I was like, Miami going to be, like, really going to put themselves back on the map. Uh, Miami was ranked 13th. Texas A&M was ranked 24th. Like, being an SEC team would have been so big for Miami, especially in this, like, uh, new era with Mario Cristobal. But they just laid an egg, bro. <laughs> Defense looked solid, but the offense was just, they couldn't move. The quarterback for Miami, Tyler Van Dyke, he's supposed to be a first-round pick. That nigga made nothing shake the whole game, bro. They was trying to blame his wide receivers and all this other bullshit. Come on, bro. You're supposed to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft, and you can't make shit shake? Texas A&M just lost to App State last week. You telling me y'all ain't better than App State? Come on, bro. I was expecting way better games from Miami. I didn't think Miami was going to be in the college football playoff conversation this year. I think that would be next year for them. But I expected them to have a leak where it's like, okay, we're not going to see the old Miami who folds in the big moments, who folds in the, the bright lights in the the night in the Saturday night games. But they did it once again, and that's why I was yep. just so disappointed in Miami, bro. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's going to take for them to um get that catalyst to make the jump to be in the mix again because they'll be the, they'll be the first out of the three Florida teams, Miami, Florida State, and Florida, to do it after such a long period of time of none of us really being in the conversation, Florida State being the last team to be in the conversation, really, uh, as far as, like, actually making to the playoffs and actually winning some shit. I, I don't know what it's going to take for them, but hopefully. Who they play this week? Uh, I know Texas A&M play Arkansas. I don't know who Miami play. Yeah, because Miami done dropped all the way to 25. Yeah. I mean, that was a bad Dang. loss, bro. I mean, it was the special it teams. Was. I think it was the special teams fumble that really put them behind the eight ball. But the the quarterback just couldn't get anything done. I think the Mario Cristobal made, made a couple of questionable decisions, not going for it when they were in the red zone, when they had momentum. Yeah. It was a couple of questionable decisions on that part. But I was just expecting a way better game. One thing I like from Texas A&M is that they changed their quarterback. Did, they, did he play the best game? No, he did not. He didn't even look that great. But I'm glad they changed their quarterback because the quarterback they were playing the first couple of games, that nigga was a trash can. I'm glad they bitched his ass. The dude that they started versus Miami, he played uh, for LSU last year. He had some good games last year. So I think Texas a and will have uh, better games throughout the season. I think we can actually see them compete with Alabama this year because early in the year, I was questioning if them boys were going to be good because that nigga was so trash. But with this quarterback, I think they're going to, they're back in that upper, they could be in that upper echelon, like fighting for the SEC West and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. definitely shout out to Texas A&M for getting that W, but I was just disappointed in Miami, bro. I thought this was going to be the time to step up. 
And moving on, I wanted to talk about some Heisman watch too. So through the first few weeks of the college football season, what would you have as your Heisman ranking so far? I would still say Caleb Williams, bro. He's still my number one player to watch. Uh, I still got Will Anderson in the conversation. Mm. Who else would I have in this conversation still? Oh, Bryce Young. I got Caleb Williams, though, still as, as the number one, bro. I'll probably have Will Anderson at number two. <laughs> you know what's funny, bro? You know who really going to win Heisman? Who? Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett is going to end up winning the Heisman, and I feel like he's falling under the radar because is he the best player? Is, is he even the best quarterback in his conference? No. But those teams, Georgia? Got some dogs, and he's putting up big numbers, playing way better than what he did last year. They're winning because of their offense. Their defense is good, but they're winning because their offense this year, bro. I, will, I was going to say Stetson Bennett. He, he'll probably win from a consistency and, like, stat-filling point. I think just from a carrying a program he's point, end up that's, winning why that I got shit, the Caleb, that's why I got Caleb Williams as my lead right now. I can understand your stats and Bennett point, though. And their offense is a lot better this year than it was on um, the last two years. Let me look up some stats for y'all. He, through three games, he has almost a 1,000 yards passing, five touchdowns, and he's uh, ran for a touchdown every game. So basically he has uh, 1,100 total yards and eight touchdowns through three games. Playing what hell of a season. If you if you remember Stetson Bennett from last year, he was really just a game manager. So the fact that he's True. elevated to actually be a Heisman contender is a big jump. I think he's number one in the Heisman conversation. I will have Bryce Young number two, and I will have Kayla Williams number three with Will Anderson slotted at four for me. Uh, I think Bryce Young had a couple of Heisman moments in that Texas game. That's why I still have him at two. And uh, Caleb Williams, he's quietly rising the ladder. Right now, USC is number seven, slowly creeping up. They got some huge games coming up because they still got to play uh, Utah and uh, some other teams, UCLA and uh, teams like that on their schedule. So we got some a huge Heisman moment games coming up for Caleb Williams to really put uh, raise his name in the Heisman conversation. But right now, I have Stetson Bennett at one, Bryce Young at two, and Caleb Williams at three bro it's going to be exciting this year because i think on bovada right here they got cj stroud caleb williams bryce young stetson bennett and dylan gabriel as the top five odds dylan gabriel get, from oklahoma yeah to get the uh what's call it to get the heisman hmm. who was number one cj stroud on bovada hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't have him at number one. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't, have him I wouldn't one. but okay. I, I mean, had him at number one before three. the season started. Yeah. I had him at number one before the season started. I gotta see them not, play against another Big Ten team or something for me to. Caleb Williams play definitely him. snagged that shit for me after week one. I was like, oh yeah, it's probably gonna be him. I Anthony Richardson they... was in the conversation after that week one. But I was like, nah, I'll definitely slid down after the last two weeks. Because it feels like Alabama just has way more big games on their schedule to put themselves on the map. Like, they play Arkansas next week, who is ranked top 10. Like, Ohio yep. State, I'm not really seeing any big games on Ohio State's schedule for real, bro. That when, Even though he can still have a good season, no matter who they play, I'm not seeing anybody big on their schedule. Though. I'm trying to go through Ohio State's schedule real quick. Like, Iowa, like, they're not playing anybody. Oh, they play Penn State later in the season, late October. Mm. Uh, after that, they're not playing anybody. So it's like, he can still win whether they play anybody or not, as long as he puts up great performances. But you always yeah. have to have a Heisman moment. And currently, he does not have one. So that's why I'm just questioning it. So we got to see him play against, like, a good team in the Big Ten to really see him slide up to, for number one, for me at least. All right, and moving forward, we are going to Two Wild Wednesday. Hey, I'm going to let you start it off. All right, my first one. The Philadelphia Eagles are a top three team in the league right now. Too wild or not too wild. We just saw wild. their game against the Vikings. We saw how that defense, Darius Slay and them boys, had Captain Kirk looking real uh, Star Trekish instead of 
football quarterback ish. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jalen Hurts, the way he's connected with AJ Brown and the rest of these boys, the way they're just able to run the football and just be so dynamic with using the weapons that they have right now, bro. It, I don't think it's great. They're one of the only teams in the league right now that's two and zero. Oh, so I think right now it's not too wild to say they're a top three team in the NFL in total, not just the NFC, not just um the NFC East or whatever. Like, no, they are a top three team in the league. I'm going to double down on that take and take it even further. The Bills versus the Eagles will be the Super Bowl matchup. Too wild or not too wild? Too wild. <laughs> too damn wild. <laughs> yes, Don't let sir. Derek see this. Don't let Derek see this. <laughs> No, Man, Dan's not way- gonna let you say this. He's not gonna huh? let you say this at all. He's hey. gonna try and downplay the hell out of this. <laughs> no, but look, this is what I'm gonna say though, bro. The way the Eagles are looking, because I said coming into the season, the only three teams that I were truly worried about in the NFC were the Bucks, the Rams, and the Eagles. And the Eagles are looking like the best team in the conference in total, honestly. The Bucks going through their injury issues, and the Rams got the Super Bowl hangover. They got to get over that at this point. I think they'll be better by the end of the season. But the Eagles right now look like the best team in the NFC. And I think it is not too wild for this team to be in the Super Bowl. That defense, Darius Slay locking up your number one, the defense is much improved. The linebacking core is way better than a season ago. And the weapons, you have everything you need, Jalen Hurts. I got Miles Sanders at running back. You got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, uh, Dallas Goddard at tight end. And it's not that he just has these weapons. He just looks so much more improved and composed, bro. bro. That's the big thing. He's making throws that he wasn't making last year, bro. You feel what I'm saying? He really executing. He's executing. You know what I'm saying? He's making it look easy. Like It's not like an execution of... Okay, like we see he's really putting every he's making that shit look like, bro. I've been doing this for two, three seasons straight. Like, that's what we want to see from Jalen Hurts. We don't want to see growing pains and all that anymore right now. It's like, nah, bro. Like you this season, you either got it or you don't. And he's showing us right now, right off the bat, hey, I'm here. I spent the yeah. offseason studying. I spent the offseason getting in touch with my offensive unit. Jalen Hurts said, I'm here, bro. Like, I'm gonna make that run in the playoffs this year. Do I think it's gonna be Super Bowl? Nah, but they're going to make some noise in the playoffs for sure. So I say too wild for this one. Not too wild. Bills versus Eagles will be the Super Bowl matchup. All right, Edgar, you can go with your next one. Y'all got to get used to Quincy, bro. He's going to give like three more Super Bowl matchups before the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to say. That's he's probably gonna give like, That's probably He's going to give like three more different <laughs> Super Bowl matchups. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to remember which one was his original one. Yep, that's a good thing. It's a, this is a week by beast. It's real fluid. Real fluid. <laughs> Uh, good question. This is a good question I have for um the topic we discussed earlier. Which O and two team will have the quicker turnaround, the Bengals or the Raiders? I think we talked about that earlier. I think the Raiders will have the best turnaround. It's crazy because they're in the tougher. Who we'll have conference. the quicker turnaround? Who we'll yeah. have the quicker turnaround? I, let me. I gotta look at schedules at that. If you're talking about, yeah, I don't think it's the Bengals, bro. I don't think it's the Bengals. Just looking at their schedule. They had the they had the Patriots on their schedule. They had the Steelers again. They got to play the Chiefs, the Bucks, the Bills, and the Ravens uh, twice. I, that's a tough one, bro. That's a tough one. I'm gonna look at the Raiders' schedule real quick. All right. So after that, they got the Broncos. They got the Chiefs. They got the Texans. They got the Saints. They got the Jags. They got a, they got a few winnables in there. They got they got a better schedule lineup than the Bengals. Ah, that's kind of tough. That's kind of a toss-up, bro, when you think about it. Because, yes, the, the Raiders are in the tougher division, but just in terms of upcoming games, I think I would give that to the Raiders over the Bengals, though. Mm, I don't know. I think I trust Joe a little bit more with his offense than right now with Devon, not Devontae, than with Derek Carr. Because, like you said, bro, your first two games, two winnable games. Granted, the Chargers, a division, um, a division rival, they got a stout team, but you didn't you didn't perform that well game one. And then game two, you just you had the unspeakable happen of a team coming back on you after having a lead majority of the game. It's like you're showing us you're not you don't know how to win games at the moment, and you don't know how to close the games that you have a lead in. Those, those are huge things you got to make a turnaround with. I think Joe Burrow 
just having to polish his game and work with the old line that he's been working on with the with the bad old line that he's used to having as an obstacle. I think that's a little bit more fixable because he's dealt with the situation already, as opposed to Derek Carr, where it's like, hey, bro, like we done gave you everything now. What you going to do? So but did that offensive line get worse? Because damn, he didn't even look that bad last year, bro, in terms of just like the type of production he was getting. Bro. But like y'all said, they got more film on them now, too. So that's what shit. I'm saying. It's the even tougher. Was, it's even tougher. Line was bad, but they ain't had that much film on you last year. So you got to get away with some shit, even though you had a bad online. But I think he'll be able to overcome it this season. I think Jamar Chase is still going to somehow, some way, still win Offensive Player of the Year. I, I got faith in Joe. I think the Bengals were turning around a lot quicker than the Raiders. All right, moving on. I got the Jaguars are winning the AFC South. Too wild or not too wild. And really think about this now. But think about how the Titans and the Colts look. They just it's don't sad. the Colts. It's sad that this is not too wild, bro. Like, I really don't know what to say, bro. This is not too wild. <laughs> I don't even got no argument for this shit. Not too wild. <laughs> it's not too wild, bro. They already dogged the Colts, who I thought were going to win the division. I already predicted that the Jags were going to be second coming into the season. I knew the Titans were going to have a regression. And the Texans... I think the Texans are a scrappy team, but I'm not worried about the Texans if I'm the Jags. I think the Jags are going to win this division. Y'all are asleep on their defense. Y'all still thinking about the Jags from last year, bro. They got more talent this year, bro. I promise you they do. They still got a young team. So it's still going to be some games where they get beat. But the defensive line with Trayvon Walker, who they drafted number one, Josh Allen, Devin Lloyd, who they drafted in the first or second round. They got some dogs on that defense that people got to look out for. And they got an underrated receiving core. And Trevor Lawrence is still him. I ended up tweeting that last week because a lot of people were still questioning that. Like, he's still him. Oh, yeah, They they still got to get him some more weapons over there in in Jacksonville. But Trevor Lawrence is still him. Dude, never get that twisted. He's still that guy. And he's going to get them to win this division. For sure. (laughs) T-Law. For sure. All right, you got Um, it. My next one was, and this goes back to that same division, the Colts are the biggest disappointment this season so far. Too wild or not too wild? That is not too wild, bro, because the teams that they have lost to, I thought they were going to dog the Texans and the Jaguars. So the fact that you you were you they tied with the, the, the Texans in week one. Why are you tying you with the Texans? Blown out Did you get blown? by the Jaguars in week two? <laughs> I mean, the, the Tex or the Jaguars didn't even let them score until the fourth quarter. <laughs> like, like y'all couldn't score a point until the fourth. I understand that Michael Pittman, their best receiver, was out, but this defense is supposed to be way better than what they've shown. And damn, Matt, 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 Matt Ryan, that man is cooked. He's cooked. <laughs> He's cooked. I thought Phillip Rivers was bad when Phillip Rivers was playing for the Colts. Matt Ryan is looking worse, bro. Matt Ryan is done, bro. Man. He is done. So not I too say, wild, bro. I say not too wild. The Colts are the biggest disappointment. I thought just dropping Matt Ryan into this equation with Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, and the and the defense that they got in a trash division, I thought the Colts were exactly. clearly going to be the best team by far. And two division games back-to-back. You tie with one who was slated to be the worst team in that division. <laughs> and then the second worst team in that division, you lose to and get blown out. So I, I really I have low expectations for the Colts for the rest of the year, bro. Like I, I'm just very disappointed in them. I know it's only two games in. I know they're not the only team 0-2 right now, but I have more faith in the Raiders. I got more faith in the Bengals. I got more faith in uh who's the it's one more zero and two team right now that I could probably say I got more faith than the um than the Colts at this moment. So not too wild. It's bad, bro. It's bad. I can't even disagree with you on that one. All right, moving on. I got the Lions will make the playoffs. Too wild or not too wild? Who in that division? Shit. I you got the Vikings, Vikings and you got the, uh, the Packers. I say not too wild, bro. Like the the Lions can probably do it. Record their record probably gonna be ugly, but they'll still probably make the playoffs in the NFC. Like, cause it's a lot of it's a lot of bad NFC teams this year. Like the Falcons, the Panthers are terrible. Uh, the Vikings, I don't know what the hell they finna have happen. 
Uh, you got the Seattle. Else? You got oh, the, the Bears. I'm not counting the Bears. No, the Bears. I'm not counting on no Seattle. Dallas. It's at least, oh, Dallas. Oh, Washington. Yeah, the Lions can make the playoffs. The Lions can. Yeah. Make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. If they keep playing not... how they playing, they can make the playoffs. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think Dan Campbell really got these boys hyped up for like a revenge type of season this year. That they're not the same team that went almost went over sixteen last year. That they're ready to like really win some games. I'm in yeah. Raw St. Brown. That man was going crazy on Sunday. I think he had like eight receptions for like 150 and two tucks. He looking crazy. Look, he's going to have one crazy season. Jared Goff played solid enough. I ain't going to say he played good. He played solid. And DeAndre Swift. I just need Derek, uh, Jared Goff not to fuck this shit up. That's my biggest thing. Because that he is the person that can really derail this season. Because he's the type of nigga that can look solid, but he's the type of nigga that can throw you out of a game as well. So as long as he ain't turning that bitch over, I think they'll be fine. The defense is much improved from a year ago. Aiden Hutchinson had a, a hell of a game. I think he had a couple of sacks in this uh, past game versus Washington. They are a much improved team. Jared Goff just has to stay the course and not turn the ball over, bro. That's all I'm hoping for. So not too wild. And my last one, this is just a fun one. Which QB would you rather have? Kirk Cousins, Jameis Winston, or Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Baker needs to be disqualified. Man. I don't even want that nigga on my squad. X that nigga out early. X him out early. And he a locker room cancer. <laughs> at least at least the other two are jovial niggas. Um I, you know I'm rolling with Jameis, bro. Jameis is my man. I think uh him and Kirk got the same issue. When they're down, they'll just throw that bitch around willy-nilly and just get that bitch up. <laughs> and they said we see it last uh, last this week. Like if when they're down, they just gonna throw that bitch to the other they team. Just throw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just that's just how it is, bro. So but I'll ride with Jameis. I think Jameis has more ability. He's younger too. So I I'll ride with Jameis, bro. Uh I will pick Jameis, honestly, out of these three terrible quarterbacks. I will pick Jameis. <laughs> <laughs> I will pick Jameis. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm rolling with Jameis, bro. Kirk, Kirk you know, has more, more moments, though. This is what I'll say. Kirk has more moments. I think Kirk has won playoff games before, so for sure I will, I'll give him that. But just in ability, I think Jameis does have more ability, though. Uh, moving forward, the last one I got on the docket is, this is honestly a double-sided one. Tua will lead the Dolphins to a Super Bowl in the next three years. Too wild or not too wild? Mm. I say not too wild. Leading them to a Super Bowl, not necessarily winning or losing. I say not too wild. I don't think it's too wild with this roster. And like I said before, they're so young. Everybody just has to stay the course and improve, and they have the talent. You're still going to have roadblocks like the Bills and the Chiefs in your way for sure. We just got to see Tua mature. But I think in the next couple of years, I think Tua going to be up there in that conversation. And I think something that we're going to have to talk about before this end of the season, because this is how much I'm believing in Tua right now, how good of a season he's going to have. By midway through the season, we're going to have to – are you are we gonna have to bring back that, that that Tua and uh Justin Herbert debate by the middle of the season? We're gonna bring back that, that debate. We're gonna bring back that debate because y'all gave that to Justin Herbert because Tua was looking me in his first couple of years. But I think midway through the season, everybody gonna be like, Oh no, Tua got some shit working over there in Miami. Oh we, no, that we we, we jumped off the bandwagon see. too early. We shall see. My boy That's Herbert ain't saying. let me down yet. My, since my <laughs> boy got in the lead, he ain't let me down yet. Hey, so I ain't hey, even worried. No that man. nigga ain't been to the playoffs yet, though. He got more. T- hey, he showed more promise. But right now, that shit is 0-0. Zero, zero. Right now, it's all about who's going to win in the playoffs. Right now, it's about That's the true. talent. Because both, both teams, the Chargers and the, uh, the, the Dolphins, y'all got talent on both sides of the ball. No complaints. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't care what injuries y'all going hey. through, Herbert and Allen. And they both in tough divisions. So and y'all both in tough divisions. So y'all, y'all gonna have to overcome. But like I said, midway through the season, we're gonna bring back that Tua versus Justin Herbert debate. I'm gonna make sure of it, goddammit. I'm gonna make sure of it. I know who so winning. definitely, definitely <laughs> be on the lookout for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be sure. But all right, that is it for uh two wild Wednesday. Moving over to social media wants to know. We got 
Should the NBA go back to the high school, to the NBA route CBA? So it was being talked about this week that they were talking about the collective bargaining agreement and they were talking about dropping the age of qualification down from 19 to 18. Uh, so do you think they should go back to the high school to NBA uh, CBA? Might as well. Um, especially with the fact that now college players get to get paid you know, and shit, they damn near, they're professionals, but they're amateurs because they're, at, at this point, like, it, it really don't matter what route you take. I think we're, whether it's one and done, whether you go into college for two, three years, whether you go to, like, this overtime league or whatever, there are so many different routes to take. I think this is just making it even easier for the elites to get into the professional realm sooner and have a longer career. So I'm I'm definitely backing it because we've had this conversation before. It's not like every high schooler is going to have this thought of I'm going to try and go to the draft. Like, nah, niggas still going to know for real who can really go to the draft and who can't. So this I don't see this hurting um any of the players in any way. I think it's just going to put the people we want to see in the league, it's going to put them in there a lot sooner because you're going to have players who separate themselves from the rest like they already do. Players that we know can go to the league probably straight out of high school will see that happening a lot more frequently than what we ever have seen it in the past. So I, but it's not, it's still not going to be the droves of players that people think are just going to get into the NBA. Like, nah, it's still only going to be like a handful of people every year. So, but this is the thing about opening the door back up, it will lead to more thought and more misguided players going down the route that a lot of people took down back in the mid 2000s when this was a possibility. A lot of people just think about the success stories of the high school, the NBA. We always think about the Kobe's, the Kevin Garnett's, the LeBron James, but nobody ever talks about the high school, the NBA players that did not get drafted. And where did their careers go after this? You say that, Oh, everybody's going to know that. Oh, it's a separation between those that can go and those who can't, but those players Everybody doesn't have the same one track mindset of like, okay, I know I can't make it to the NBA. Some naive kid is gonna be like, damn, if I can go to the NBA, if I can just show get in my get in the workout, I can show that I'm able to be in the NBA. Some people take that step and have earlier careers than what they wanted to because they made the wrong step and when they shouldn't have. And I don't think it's necessary either. Being like you said before with the NIL, why do you want to go to high school to the NBA so soon when you're not sure of the opportunity being there? Go ahead and get your money with the NIL before bouncing to something like the NBA. I, I don't just I don't I just don't think it's necessary right now. And that's why I hear a lot of back and forth between like the CBA and the NBA Players Association right now, because they don't really know if they want to go back to the 18 year old system. Because why? Like what what's what will lead to that? What is the success from that? Like you feel what I'm saying? There's no real upside for dropping it down to 18, especially when the system that you have in place is pretty solid, especially when the players are getting money now with the NIL. Most of them are getting millions. Some of them are getting millions at least. It's like, let those high-ranking players get their millions or go to these other leagues and get the hundreds of thousands of dollars before they even go to the NBA where they can get experience and get these other type of experiences before they go to the NBA. I just don't think it's necessary to go from high school to the NBA with so many different routes available, especially money-wise, before you get there. I think at least just having the door open would help. Yeah, but because they're still going to be able to have the option at the end of the day, and I'm pretty sure these players will know how well their chances are, especially if they got agents, especially if, you know, they um they got the right circles with them. And I, I know that's hard to do. I know it's hard to get the right agent. I know it's hard to have the right um circle around you when it comes to advisors on whether or not you're really going to have that shot. But, like, let's say this was a couple of years ago, if the CBA was trying to introduce this with Zion Williamson when he was still in high school a few years ago, we know Zion probably could have went to the league straight out of high school. But this is the but thing, he had though. To do, he had to do the situation with going to Duke for um the one year. And I think Zion is a great example where he could have went to the NBA right out of high school because he had the physical build. But it was better for him and his brand that he went to Duke because more people started to notice who he was and his draft stock went up. There was no downside to it. It was nothing but upside to build your brand in college or wherever you go and then to go to the NBA because when you play against these college people I and mean, when you're playing on a national stage like with Duke or something like that, 
you have nothing but scouts watching you at all times. So you have the ability to raise your stock. But when you go from high school to the NBA, it's so many questions that come along with that because you've never played against college or NBA competition before. So those questions will always linger. And even players in the top 10, bro, of their classes, if you're a top 10 high school prospect, there's only 60 NBA draft picks available, bro. And yep. only 30 of those picks are guaranteed. Even if you're picking the second round, there is no guarantee that you're going you're gonna to be in the NBA for that long. Maybe two years not before you're over overseas or your career is done. So it's only 30 guaranteed spots. Why waste that on a high school to NBA track? When you can go to other places and you have other options, bro. Like, I just don't think it's safe to go to the high school, the NBA model, bro. I think it's way safer with the model that we have now. Do some kids get exploited with the NCAA uh, ruling? For sure. They should be getting way more money than they, they are getting right now. But it's the best that we're going to get with the NCAA's heavy hand, bro. So you got to roll with it. And I think it's best for the kids. If you go to high school to the NBA, a lot of mistakes can be made because of it. So I, I I'm I'm I against it, bro. I'm against. It. I don't know. I th I think the the one or two every generation that we've gotten, I think it'll still be that. I don't think it'll be that many people just getting the downside of trying to take that high school to NBA attempt. Like I think the players who know we the players we know can do the shit, those will be the only players like really attempting it, and they'll probably get in and like really have the success. Like, cause who was the last? Wasn't Dwight Howard the last person um, straight from high school to the NBA? I don't know if Dwight was. He probably was the last if... person drafted in the first round. Probably, probably the yeah. last person drafted in the first round. And mm -hmm. we know the success Dwight. Shit, Dwight Howard is still some. But that's a, but that's my NBA point, now. though, bro. We only talk about the success stories, but we never talk about those players who probably went into, from high school to the NBA in that same draft class as Dwight Howard who went undrafted. Because their, their their career died when they were not drafted, bro. That's why I said if you are in the top 10 of that NBA or in that high school rankings, that's no guarantee that you're going to be a top 10 pick. That's no guarantee that you're going to be a first-round pick. And like I said, if you get picked in the second round, that's never going to guarantee that you're going to be in the league longer than two years, bro. There's no guarantee. But even if you're in the top 10 of your high school class, there's no guarantee with that, bro. There's not. That's why I say it's a slippery slope no matter how high of a pick you are because pe people will always have questions regarding your status. We always remember the success stories, but I remember reading this one article. I can never remember his name, bro, but he was he was from Palmetto, Florida or Palmetto, Texas. He went to the NBA draft because he was just naive. A lot of people were telling him, you're not ready for the, uh, the NBA. You're not going to get drafted. But he was just naive because he said, I'm going to go to these workouts. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show them that I'm ready for the NBA. This, that, the third. He ended up going to the NBA. He didn't get drafted. His career died two years later. He played a couple of years overseas and his career died. He had the talent if he would have went to college and then went to the NBA. But he tried to get the, to the NBA quicker than what he should have been. His career died. We never talk about those players, though. Like I said, I can't even remember his name, but it was an article written by Bleacher Report a few years ago. But we always remember the success stories. But it's just way more down stories to that than the upside stories that we get with the Kevin Garnett's, LeBron, Kobe, and Dwight Howard's. And that's what I'm worried about, bro. It's, just, it's not necessary to open that door when it's so much downside to it. You feel me? When what you have in place is, it's I think, the best model you're going to get with all of these options that you have in terms of leagues and NIL. Hopefully the hopefully the number of downside stories, if this if this actually happens, if this rule actually is put back in place, hopefully the amount of downsides go down just because of the amount of available options that they yeah. have. Back then, it wasn't that many options. So yeah, you were really stepping out on a limb if you chose that route because it's like, look, bro, there is no other option. Nowadays, I, I think you just have a lot more options coming out of high school to look at outside of either, <laughs> damn, I go to college or boom, I go straight to the NBA and make the type of money I want. Now it's like, damn, I could play in this, um, this pro league. I can play in this pro league. I can go to college and make pro level money. You know, like you got at least three to four options. Now I can go overseas. You know, you got three to four options that you could choose from. And I think the pool of people who are going to choose that straight to the league like, it's only going to be maybe one to two players a season, if that. 
I ain't even going to say every season. It may be one or two players every other year or so that really try and go out on a limb like that, as opposed to five or six players throughout the whole country. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just think there's there's room for it to succeed, and I think the the downside of it isn't as big as what it once was. Mm, I got you. But I still – I wouldn't even open it back up, bro, just to save kids their career. I think they would be – they probably would make more money from it. I think it would be a more exciting time to talk about high school to NBA. I think that's such a hot topic because we've seen so many success stories like the Kobe's and stuff like that. But I think you would just be saving kids from themselves if you just didn't open that door back up and you let them choose something before they get to the NBA. So their bodies can mature or if they can get used to having some money first and in the NIL or with the overtime league or something like that. You feel me? I think it's just so many other routes that you can take before going to the NBA. But uh, moving forward to entertainment and current events, we got cooking chicken and NyQuil? Yeah, bro. I saw this shit on um, Instagram, and then I seen it on TikTok. Y'all, I, I want to know, are people really just going to continue to be used to being brainwashed like this, bro? There were people on TikTok cooking chicken with NyQuil, medicine. Like you're cooking something with medicine, cough syrup, and it's it's. I think you can um. I think they say if you like if you boil cough syrup or something like that, it becomes toxic at that point. Like so, people are just. I don't know, bro. I'm worried about people. I'm worried about the human race in general because are we really that able to be brainwashed at this point, bro? To where we see something on TikTok and we're just like, I'm gonna try it. Like no matter what the fuck it is at this point. <laughs> And you guys can see the video on the screen right here. This is really some nut shit. When I see you text me this, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I literally had to look it up to see what is going on. Because <laughs> who is coming up with these tricks? And she's cooking it with a, a, a flat iron. Yeah, That's what's... Bl- <laughs> like, what is going on here, bro? I, I, I don't even know what to say. The chicken's not even cooking. Like, it's just sitting there boiling in the damn And that's medicine. what's stressing me out. <laughs> and that's what's... Str- and she's pouring it back into the bottle. Oh, my goodness. That shit is pink. Bro, <laughs> this is... This is, crazy, <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> this because, is look, this is one thing I always thought. I always thought that robots was going to be the end of civilization. I know a lot of people oh. thought it was going to be apocalypse and stuff like that. I thought it was going to be robots. But honestly, we are going to be the ones to kill ourselves with this nut shit, bro. Cooking chicken in NyQuil. And this is a popular trend. Yes, us adults can just laugh at this shit. But we got to think about the younger people. And like, this shit is really polluting their minds. Like, they're really intrigued by this type of shit to go do this at home. Like, somebody can really get seriously sick from doing that bullshit right there. So, come on, bro. Y'all gotta get it. Think about the this. shit that we did, bro. The cinnamon challenge. Yeah. Damn, uh, what was the other shit we had, did? We did some other shit. I told you, niggas was eating Tide Pies back in the day. Tide, the Tide Pod shit, bro. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Like, people were... It's, it's not, like, the first thing that people have done that's crazy as far as a trend, but there is a pattern of the human race getting stupider and stupider <laughs> and just trying the more craziest shit like as time goes. So I wonder what the next shit is going to be. Y'all cooking chicken and medicine. I really don't know how I can get any crazier than that. <laughs> yeah. And like, who has the sense anyway to start this trend? That's honestly my biggest question. Who started this trend and who said, you know what? We're going to actually make it a trend. We're going to actually have multiple people do this shit. Like that's where I... That's where I say I lose faith in humanity at that point when people try to catch on with the yeah, nut shit bro. that they see. It's like y'all see this shit is stupid as hell, but y'all want to try it for what? But you want to try it like for what? Like how do you how I do you really think that, that shit tasted for real? How do you think that shit tasted? That shit probably tasted terrible. It probably did. It tasted like raw chicken in in slime. That's, That's probably what I'm what it saying. Like. like the shit didn't even look appetizing. But niggas, come on, bro. I I can't believe this stupid shit, bro. I can't. I, I can't. Actually, no, <laughs> I can. I definitely can. With the society we're living in nowadays, I can believe it. Can and believe it's it. funny because I have a fun fact about uh, TikTok as well. And this is why we see their trends pop up so much. A fun fact is that Google is losing 40% of its search traffic to TikTok wow. now. So a lot of people that used to just go to Google when they were searching up things are now going to TikTok. 
and Google is losing a lot of traffic that way. So we see in a lot Damn. of these trends become way more popular, way faster now. It's because way more people are getting in tune with it because of this. The Google searches, the TikToks are popping up now. Or they're going to TikTok to just search up just random shit. Or when they're looking to go to a certain place, they're not going to Google to look up the places to go. They're going to TikTok to look at the places to go. Because instead of getting like websites, you're actually getting like visuals of what you can see. Like and you're getting wheel. opinions and experience. And you're getting opinions about places to go in the city. So mm. all of that is reasons why they are starting to take traffic away from Google. Like I said, just a Damn. fun fact. Damn, 40%. Damn, that's a lot. Damn. And that shows you how popular TikTok has been rapidly growing over the years. It was something yes. that was really small, but it's, it's so huge at this point that I don't know if it can be stopped. A lot of people thought this was going to be a here and gone type of thing. I think TikTok I did. was going to be around I for really a long thought it was going to be a I thought it was going to be a here and gone type of thing, but it's it's TikTok right now over the last 2-3 years is having the same effect that Facebook had when that shit like really blew up like not in the early 2000s but like that 2010 2011 era when facebook really elevated to where like everybody was on that bitch like billions of people were on that shit it i think tiktok is having that effect right now where it's going to be and not just going to be it is the main social media right now and it's going to be that facebook level platform from here on out like I think that's the new wave that everybody is going to continue to be on. Snapchat, I think Snapchat going to be the next social media to die. The way that oh, MySpace sure. died, sure. the way that um it was another on um, social uh Tumblr, like a the way a couple of these social media pages have died, I mm -hmm. think Snapchat going to be next, bro. Because oh, sure. who is on Snapchat anymore? Uh, like exactly. Like <laughs> honestly <laughs> Exactly. I only go on there to see what whatever other people may be doing. Like I have, I, I see nothing have not but skeletons on Snapchat. Bro. Nothing but skeletons. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> old I, people from the past. I think that shit finna be the next one to go. But damn, taking forty percent of traffic away from Google, bro. I use Google a lot, so that's that's what I'm saying. So that just shows you how much people are using TikTok. If Google is getting stripped of it, you damn. Hey. That might be something y'all need to start investing in. TikTok is going nowhere. It's here to stay yeah. for a minute. And, and this isn't one of those, this isn't one of those situations where you're catching on too late. Cause you know, a lot of times when it comes to investing mm -hmm. and shit and putting stock and shit, if you hop on it when it's already hot, you too late at that point. But nah, this is one of the ones that nah, you can go ahead. It might turn into a blue chip stock for real. The same way like Disney and and um what you call it? Uh, what's another blue chip? Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah. A lot of these companies that will just always be around and always elevating. Shit, mm -hmm. you might be able to do that with TikTok right now. They might turn blue chip for real. That shit crazy. Definitely be on the lookout. Next thing I got on the docket is the Suns owner, whose name is Robert Sarver, was suspended for a season. That's back. Yeah. There we go. All right. So, yes. What was I talking about? I was talking about Robert Sarver. Damn, this shit delicate as hell. All right. Yeah. So, Robert Sarver. So, the NBA has suspended uh, Phoenix Suns and Phoenix Mercury owner Robert Sarver for one year, plus fined him for $10 million. So what he did is Sarver said the N-word at least five times when recounting a statement about others, and he made sex-related inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of females, inappropriate physical conduct, and engaged in harsh treatment. So this was a big topic of conversation, especially in the NBA community, because players like Chris Paul, who was a player for the Phoenix Suns, and LeBron James spoke out about the type of suspension that he had because... Why did he only get one year? If he, that's the type of treatment that he has for his employees. That's how he talks in like regular conversation with the N-word and stuff like that. So players don't want to just see him suspended for a year and find 10 million, which is nothing to him. They want to see him banned and like uh, threatened to like actually sell the team. So how do you feel about this situation? I agree. I feel like one year is a slap on the wrist. That's damn near telling him to go on vacation. And you only finding him 10 million? <laughs> He's still making him to go during the front of the team. 
Yeah, telling him to go away for a year and finding him ten million is the same as saying go on vacation and just put some money aside for your taxes. Like that's all that sounds like to me, especially for what he's um being uh investigated for, what what claims have come out and whatnot, and what evidence has been brought uh to everyone's attention. So I totally agree. Chris Paul not only being a player of the Phoenix Suns, but a leader of the NBA um NBA Players Association. Like, I'm sure he's pissed off about this. LeBron James being the face of the league. I'm sure as hell he's pissed off about this. I'm sure Devin Booker and the rest of the Suns players are like, whoa, like, this is who we playing for? Like, this is who we got our culture here in, at the Valley built under? Like, no. Nah. So I totally agree. The punishment has to be much harder than just And honestly, <laughs> this isn't the first time we've heard about Robert Sarver in the news for some shit like this. I think some news came out a year ago about in conversations he was calling like Draymond a nigga behind closed doors. So there was already topics about uh, Sarver coming out last year about he how he should be the owner of the team. But they let him rock throughout this season, and they finally put the uh, the punishment down after a thorough, quote-unquote, investigation. But they got to give him more than that. So y'all going to let this rock, basically. Him saying nigga in the inappropriate treatment, that's what y'all allowing in the NBA? Come on, bro. Something got to be done. I know this is a boys club. And uh, with the owners and shit like that. But Adam Silver, bro, a, a lot of people look up to you and think that you're a good commissioner. But if you letting this nigga rock after some bullshit like that, we can't look at you the same. Because if this was David Stern, David Stern would have had that nigga head on the chopping block. Day one. <laughs> that nigga would have had his head like, we ain't allowing this bullshit. So Adam Silver, you need to put your foot down for real and rescind the suspension and make him actually sell the team, bro. Because that shouldn't be allowed in the league, bro. I at agree. all. I totally that shouldn't agree. be allowed. And another thing that Cause, comes cause along. This was similar to, um, this similar to what's his name? Donald Sterling. Donald yeah. Sterling. Yep. Yeah. So it was the same, similar type. Yeah. Calling niggas niggas. Yeah. Calling players niggas and was, uh, uh, inappropriate conduct and shit like that. So literally yep. the same thing, but you suspended him or you made him sell the team and we got this nigga rocking out. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't make sense because when was that Donald Sterling shit? That like was 20, like. What year is this? Twenty twenty two. That was about eight years ago. Twenty thirteen. Was yeah. that Stern? That might have still been David Stern. Was it? Is that still David? Nah, Stern? nah. Adam Adam Silver been the. Uh, Hold on, for a bro. Minute. Was that? Nah, that wasn't David. That might have been David Stern, bro. Hold on, David Stern, NBA term. Twenty fourteen. That was him. <laughs> wow, yeah, David Stern, yeah. Let me see. Let me That's see that Donald Sterling. Yeah, David David Stern left in 2014. What was that Donald Sterling situation? Uh, Donald Sterling. Uh, da, da, da. 2014, yep. He was, yep. Well, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> that was, see, David Stern put his foot down because... I seen a documentary on Netflix. I don't know if y'all watched that. Uh, I forgot what it was called. It was about the Tim Donahue situation, the rep who ended up getting mixed up with the gambling and shit like that. I watched that oh, uh, documentary, that. bro. That really gives you a real insight into how much power David Stern had over everybody, not just the NBA, mm. but just like the 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 governors, the courtroom. They like, they both attorneys. Nigga. David Stern and Donald Sterling are both attorneys. He had a lot of control over all of that yeah. shit. So like whatever David Stern said and whatever he was uh wanted to happen, that shit really went. You feel what I'm saying? So definitely a uh, recommendation. Definitely go ahead and watch that Tim Donahue. I forgot what it's called, but it's one of it's those on Netflix. Um, it's on Netflix though. It's Tim Donahue. It's it's a series. The what, what was the uh, Manta Teo shit called? Damn. I don't even know. God damn, bro. Damn. No, you're gonna make me look that shit up. Damn, I don't it's the first man. Let me see. Tim Donahue. It's called Untold. There, there we go. Untold. I'm about to say Untold. Malice that's in what the it's Palace. Called. Yeah, Untold Operation Flagrant Foul. So that's the one about Tim Donahue. So it down to the whole uh, uh Tim okay. Donahue situation. So that shit was interesting as fuck. So definitely watch that. Because like I said, it just shows you the insight about the gambling operation, obviously, but also mm-hmm. about the power of David Stern, too. And whatever he wanted, he got. Especially when it came to, like, outcomes of games, too. So definitely check out that. Oh, damn. And also, yeah, I'm oh, that. oh, yeah, bro. That shit was fire. And also, the I want to talk about the PayPal, the PayPal sponsorship 
with this situation as well because that could be in jeopardy at this moment because the PayPal is the biggest sponsor for the Suns. And they said if they have uh, Robert Sarver come back as their owner, they're dropping the Suns as the, uh, a sponsor. So if you're going to lose your biggest sponsor over fucking Robert Sarver, you got to make this nigga sell the team. Is he is is he big enough for you to lose such a big player like PayPal? Somebody whose name is on the court and name is on the jerseys? Is that a big enough loss for you to just have this dude sell the team? And I'm sure throughout y'all throughout y'all arena, like through advertisement and all that shit. Yeah, that that's a lot of money to just be like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. Like y'all, you gotta wise up to certain shit, bro. So I think that's something that we definitely have to look out for moving uh forward. Next thing I wanted to talk about is Brett Favre robbing the hood. This is a crazy situation, bro. Brett Favre used welfare money to pay for his daughter's volleyball stadium or something like that at the University of Southern Mississippi. She was playing volleyball at the school at that time. He ended up being real slick with the governor and somebody else with like some text messages trying to be sneaky with the welfare fund so he can have the money to pay for the stadium. So it was just a real a sticky situation, bro. I wanted to get your opinion on how you felt about it. Bro, this shit, I ain't going to say it how I really want to say it. <laughs> but you know how, <laughs> man, some white people, bro, you just, you got to be like, damn, bro, you really that heartless, bro? Mississippi is the poorest state in the country. I just want people to know that. So, already with them being the poorest people in the country, you stealing from welfare money? Like, you stealing from the people who really trying to, like, live and survive out here to use it for whatever personal reasons you have? The money you made from the NFL, the money you made from Copper Shield or whatever damn um nigga got the wrangler and he got that the wrangler, wrangler check jeans. you get all these different checks but you still have welfare money and using it for your personal shit like i i just nah bro it's just some man i was just pissed when i seen that bro i was like so, ain't no way and it's so funny about this brett Favre situation because he just wasn't stealing money from like the welfare fund like he was getting money from situations where he was supposed to speak at uh conferences and events and he's not speaking at these events but he's getting the money for it and shit like that so that was another reason that's another way he funded this type of volleyball stadium as well so he got money from the welfare funds and they did some sneaky shit where he was getting paid for appearances that he didn't truly make and another thing that i read during the, in this article is that it was something that really caught my eye bro and what was it yeah, so he had to end up giving back $600,000 to the state of Mississippi because he ended up getting paid for some speeches that he never made. And then he had to give back $1.1 million because he uh, was trying to promote a state poverty fighting initiative. So that was like complete bullshit. So he had to really give back $1.1 million. And then he had to pay back interest and all that shit. Like, it was so much more than just the welfare funds involved with this shit. Like, Brett Favre just really got exposed for real for being a true asshole on so many different levels, just so just so deeper than, like, the, the welfare shit and stealing from the poor. It's like this nigga was just stealing, like, in general <laughs> from this people. You feel me? So and, it was crazy. And um, Shannon Sharp made a great point about this, bro. It's like when it comes to the, like the way the government treats people, especially people of color, when it comes to us getting welfare, us getting wit, us getting food stamps or whatever the hell, they try they hardest to make sure they catch us. Like let let you really fill out a food stamp application and you lie on that application, bro. They will dead ass like really try to punish you for that shit. Mm -hmm. And you you really just trying to get like three four hundred dollars for groceries, bro, a month. Like, they'll really, like, do they, they'll do their absolute best to catch you, like, get you in trouble, possibly put you in jail for any type of fraudulent shit you do on a food stamp application or a WIC application or whatever. But this man right here get to steal hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars from the people who are really needing the money. Like, that's the shit that blows me, bro. Like, how? For a fucking stadium? 
<laughs> exactly for a stadium for you, for your kid when you probably touch money that can probably do that on your own anyway and you could have did it as a tax right off like come on bro like, I, I hate when oof I ain't, like I said I ain't gonna say it how I really want and they already right going now, through their water situation like you said Mississippi's exactly. already poorest situation it's like it just doesn't look good Brent it like even if we used to, it just don't especially at this time when they out of water and shit like that bro you don't know where that money could have went and you just stole it for some bullshit like come on bro. That, that's, that's and honestly another thing about this situation him and the former governor who were caught during the texting back and forth about this situation they are not getting any criminal charges pursued against them which once again like you said when it comes to wicked situations like that they're trying to get you caught up and even when he gets caught the text messages are out he's not going to get any jail time he just got to pay back not even the whole entire amount that was stolen. He got to pay back just like a, you know what I'm saying, like 10 to 20% of what he stole, which is like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? If this happened to anybody else, they got to do jail time for this shit. It, it doesn't make sense. It just shows you the the race, the race factor involved in this shit, bro. And the, the status as well. Crazy. So, crazy. Crazy bro. as hell, Damn. bro. Crazy as hell. Brett Favre. I never really fuck with Brett Favre for real, so I ain't gonna act like that nigga was a national treasure. But just <laughs> like, like that shit, just crazy when niggas, when niggas that you know got money just try to take advantage, bro. It's like for yeah, what? You and got it's not this even of people. It's not even of other people with money. You doing it to the people that really ain't got money. Like, come on, bro. Like that. You know how heartless you gotta be, bro, exactly. to steal to steal from the poorest state who's facing a water crisis from the people who are trying to get government assistance. Those are the people you stealing funds from you. Oh my God. I really, to I'm build a stadium really that nobody is going to go to who the fuck or is volleyball. going to the university of Southern Mississippi to watch a volleyball game. Who the fuck like is going he, there? It ain't like he did it for Mississippi state. It ain't like he <laughs> did it for, um, old miss, uh, one of these other big programs you did for the, for a smaller school, a volleyball program of all damn programs at a smaller school. Like, come on, bro. If that ain't some rich ridiculous, shit. bro. And I think they said by the time it was actually completed, his daughter had graduated school. So it wasn't even for her. You was doing it for other people. Exactly. Like when she was in school, it was being built. But right now, she's not even in school no more. <laughs> so it's like you built this shit for her. You stole money from people. And this shit is not even being used by her. So it's like, what are you doing? I, I know that's his alma mater too, but that shit just retarded, bro. You still have money like that. And uh, moving on, we got the PWI versus HBCU beef once again. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, this girl on Twitter, I don't know what her real name is, but she started a majorette team at uh, a PWI. The PWI she's at is USC, University of Southern California. And a lot of people on black Twitter are really just going in on her, bro, because they're saying, look, we already get our space invaded with so much other shit. This is really one of the staples of HBCUs that separate us from all other schools in the nation. Why bring a piece of our culture that is not done in any other type of schooling, any other PWI system, why bring that there? And they were just going in on her on social media. And I just wanted to get your opinion on it because do I think she should have brought it over there? No, because that's something that really should just stay with HBCUs. But am I mad at her to the point to where it's like, I feel like she should be shamed on social media and all that? No, but, because. But, but why is that something that she shouldn't do? Now, this is the thing that a lot of people get twisted, bro. Like I was somebody who went to a, I didn't go to a PWI. It was like a Hispanic university. Because I was in Miami. But I've been to PWIs before. So y'all got to understand, like, being with your people is something that is major. And I don't think should just be something that is uh, excluded or inclusive to something like an HBCU. Everybody should have that type of experience, bro. Whether it's Black Student Union or certain shit that is not just the, the uh, HBCU experience. Like, everybody wants to be connected with their people. So if she wants to make a majorette group that's nothing but Black uh, girls... That's something that makes her feel more comfortable in the environment that she is in because she's surrounded by nothing but white people, bro. So she wants to feel way like more with her people. I don't think that should be something that's just like, oh, 
that's an HBCU thing. You got to go to HBCU to have that type of experience. Like, no, if she's able to have a, a, a percentage of that at a PWI while getting her education and all that shit, y'all should allow her to do that. Why is that a crime that what, what she's doing? I don't understand. Yeah. I I damn near have the same opinion as you, bro. Like I've I've had several um I've had several talks about this. I talked with Denisha about it. I talked with her god sister Daisha. I talked with my sister Netta about it. They they all see it a different way, and they see it as like no, like certain shit, like certain shit we really should just gatekeep and really not open the but door. Why? For what, what 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 were they saying because about gatekeeping? They they think the outcome is gonna be, and it, it probably could happen. The the outcome is gonna be we're gonna see a lot more PWIs starting this trend, quote unquote, of starting majorette groups with nothing but white people, and it's it's not gonna look the same. It's not gonna hit the same, and it's gonna be them basically appropriating something else in our culture. Do I think it'll happen with a few schools? Yes, I personally just think. It's not going to happen to the magnitude that they think is going to happen. It's not like we're going to see 30 to 40 PW major PWIs in the nation all of a sudden with a majorette team full of white girls. I doubt that. And happen. that's what I, and that's my point, bro. I because I've seen it at FIU when I went to school and I was somebody who I felt a, a way about it. Like when our black student union was filled with like white people was in black student union or when they were like, it was Hispanic people in black student union. I felt a way about it because this is something that is just our shit where the black people should just feel comfortable that this is our space. Why do we have people of other races in black student union? It never made sense to me. So I understand it from that perspective of like, okay, if other people start to get in this major rep and start to just break the, the all black trend, it's like, now I can understand what you're saying. But if the core value of the people that are creating these groups is to keep it black and to keep it as a majorette thing, and they, they have a focus going into it, I think they should be allowed to do it. But they have to be exclusive with it, though. They do have That's to be what exclusive I with said, it. bro. You have That's to be what exclusive. I said. You can't because let everybody said- in these groups. And I don't think, and I don't think it's even a popular thing where white girls would want to do this. I don't think it's That's a popular thing to that magnitude, bro. I truly Yo. don't think that. You'll have one or two here or there that may who try would to try to be team. a part of the group. Yeah, if it started. Yeah, but but it's not gonna be to where they're just coming in droves to do yeah. this shit, or they're gonna be making this shit on their own. Like I don't think it's gonna be that big. Them of niggas a, do cheerleading. Situation. That's what they want to be. That's what I'm saying. They're not doing that major rat shit. They they got cheer. You know how many black girls want to be a part of cheerleading, but probably don't make the cheer squad just because they either gonna be that one black girl or they just get you know, treated unfairly as the one black girl on these cheerleading yeah, squads man. at PWIs. So, shit. Start your own majorette shit. And, yes, gatekeep the hell out of it. Like, no, this is a part of BSU. Like, this is this is strictly a black student union organization. Like, So, I fully agree with them on, on that point. I, I fully agree with them on that point where it should be exclusive, where you should gatekeep it. But I don't think white people will just be starting a group up at Whatever, like at Indiana University, they finna start a, exactly, a majorette bro. group. Like, come That's on, them I'm niggas saying. not like, finna be doing that. Like, black, this is a black thing when it comes to majorettes. Somebody black is going to start. My only point is that I think white people will try to come into the group, but that's what the point where you got to put your foot down and say, no, this is only for us. You know what I'm saying? But, this is only a black thing. But the point Denisha was making when she was talking to me, she was saying that you can't do that. Like, you can't be at a PWI with a black group and tell these white girls no, they can't join because oh, they're they gonna black. go to the upper and tell her like so they're yeah. gonna go to the dean and this, that, and the third and cry out for discriminate reverse discrimination or whatever the hell. Mm, like, and it's I like feel that. I, feel I get that, that point, mm-hmm. but they can do it to us. But her point was they can do it because first off, they're white, second off, they're white women, second off, third off. They have the, they probably have the dean already on their side and the athletic director on their mm-hmm. side and all that just because of the way they institutionalize the shit. So yeah. it's like I understand that, but shit, we could still stand our ground to some extent to say, nah, this this is our thing. So you know what they can do? They can make this shit high key like a fraternity where the upper authorities can't come down and say, oh, y'all not letting white girls in because it's like, it's a certain criteria that has to be met when it comes to this fraternity of quote unquote major rights. You have to be a part of that criteria. If you white, you can have your own reasons why this person is not make the, making the group, you feel me? But she just didn't fit the criteria. I feel like it's certain things. If it's just an open group, 
then yeah, the upper authorities can say, oh, y'all got to yeah. have if everybody it's just like come like an open application type shit. Exactly. Yeah, I but I think if yeah. it's a, a fraternity where it's a criteria that has to be met to be a part of it, I think that's when you can start saying, no, nah, this ain't really for y'all. We can start turning y'all out and nobody can really say, oh, y'all, y'all just uh, turning away white girls where it's like this. They not a part of the criteria for it, which they really do when it comes to this sorority shit. I, I just, I don't know. I, that's I an interesting topic sides. that she brought up, though, because that's a very good point where the, the dean and all them can come down with the open group and let white girls in. That's a good point she but, made. Because I I understand both sides of it. I just think it's not worth, like, shaming her on social media and, like, just Hell bashing no. her and shit. Like, it, it's not worth that. And But one thing I will say, they're... And I don't agree with this. I don't agree with black students who go to PWIs looking for an HBCU experience because you're not going to get that. Like, yes, you'll have a mm. hope, shit. Hopefully you'll have a BSU or, or BSA or something similar to that. Hopefully there's black Greek life or hopefully there's something that you can have that shows some type of black culture at whatever school you go to, whatever PWI you go to. But like, for me, for example, I always wanted to go to UF. Like, that was my goal. I was never going to PWI thinking, I hope I get this HBCU experience while I'm at this PWI. Like, no, if I wanted that, I would have just went to HBCU. But this is I what I was to saying. I sure I had some type of comfortable black experience. That's what I'm that's saying. What I and I think that's what this is for her. So everybody yes. that's shaming her for, oh, you can't do this. This is only HBCU thing. Y'all don't know how big that was in terms of her comfort, bro. Especially when you're, you're on a PDU, PWI by yourself. Because I could attest this shit. Somebody who was looking for that, that open space in that group. And it's like, damn, there's not really anything out there for me. You feel me? Anything when it term, in terms of like comfort. You feel me? So when it came to comfort for her, maybe she said, I got to start my own group. And like-minded women like her would come together. You feel me? Exactly. And that's how she felt comfortable. So y'all can't say that. Because this is not an HBCU video, thing, bro. If huh? you look at the video, it's all black girls. Like, it's that's what I'm saying. All black women. She keeping it G. She keeping it G. So what y'all but mad about? Be because not every black person who goes to college wants to go to HBCU. I'm sorry, like that's yeah. that's just a fact. It's no offense to it. We love HBCUs. We fully. But you still want to keep that black culture though. But you still want to take culture with. That's like saying you don't want to go to a job where it's all white people working. But mm -hmm. like you go to a job where it's all white people working, but you try to integrate some type of blackness in wherever you're working. People will say, "Why not go somewhere that got more black people?" Uh, because maybe this is where I want to work. Like this, maybe this is where I want to have my experience. Yeah. Like, so maybe she just wanted to go to USC the same way I just wanted to go to UF. I ain't give a fuck about that black or white shit. I wanted mm. to be a Gator, bro. She probably wanted to be a USC Trojan at the end of the day, but she still wanted to have some level of comfortability in her blackness. And this was her escape to do that. This was her escape program that she thought of that she started that is like, look, I have a piece of me here at the school where I know I'm comfortable, where I know I'm with like-minded people, like looking like people like me, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, I feel like what she did wasn't totally wrong. Was it iffy in the sense of, yeah, you probably shouldn't have brought it there, but if you, but if you are going to bring it there, keep it all the way black. Moving on to movie and show news. We have the squid games director is hitting at a season three. We didn't even get a season two. I was say, we ain't even a lot of people didn't even like the end of season <laughs> one, but apparently we about to get a season three. Bro, my dog said y'all denied this shit for twelve years. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> you <laughs> niggas finna get everything. You niggas say you finna get everything now. <laughs> but apparently there is going to be a, a Leonardo a Leonardo DiCaprio role if oh. season three is greenlit. They said one actor he wants is Leonardo DiCaprio, who is a quote unquote big fan. So they said if it gets to season three, more major Hollywood actors will be a part of it. Oh, so we could we see people like him. That. Keep the shit <laughs> Asian, bro. Keep this shit mm. in y'all. This is such an Asian culture type of film, bro. Please don't fuck it up by throwing a bunch of American actors in this shit. Because it's, it's just, it's going to look so thrown together at this point. Like you're going to have people, you're going to have actors and actresses who don't speak English on the same set as Leonardo DiCaprio or whoever else, like trying to make these languages enter. It's going to be hell reading subtitles. You ain't going to know what the <laughs> hell these people saying. For sure.
I think I thought it would be dope because I don't think it will be the same thing in back to back seasons where it's like Asian, Asian. They, what if they give us a different area where we're not in just the the in China or in Tokyo, wherever where we wherever where were we in season one? I don't even know where we were. The place but it, exactly. Season two has to be a follow up. But no, season I'm season saying season two can be a follow up, but I'm saying season three, what this is talking about, season three can be a double because I don't even want season two. Honestly, because the shit is... I really ended. don't either. I really don't. So I'm, that's what I'm saying. Season three has to be in a different area. So I feel like this director can take it somewhere else where it's a different type of vibe than just Asian on Asian for the three seasons. You feel me? It's just something different. We're getting a different know. vibe with it. I, I think I, I think I'd rather prefer that, bro. Just keep it on a Eastern part of the world type of vibe. Like... Uh, and it, an experience that we're just not accustomed to, a mindset that we're just not accustomed to. Like, I, I think this is just something that they should really keep and build themselves, like, and not just throw, start throwing American shit into it because now you're kind of losing the lust of what made us, like, just be so attracted to it. Like, yeah, yeah. it's Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a big name. You'll probably get a bunch of people that watch this because it's Leo, but. I don't know, bro. I think they should really just keep that culture the same way we was just talking about black culture. Like, keep that, keep that our thing. Keep this shit y'all thing. I think the Asian aspect of it is so much more cooler to watch, bro. So I don't know. I I just thought I, that's my personal opinion on it. Yeah, that's real shit. All right, and moving on to past the ox, man. What you got for song of the week? got the backstabbers by the OJs. That shit been in my head all week. Backstabbers. The week started. The week just started. That shit been in my head for the past two days. Damn, what I got for this week, bro? I got something from Ludacris, bro. I've been listening to a lot of Ludacris this week. Uh, I'm going to go with Slap slap by Ludacris. Ludacris. <laughs> I think that's his favorite album, my favorite album, too. That release therapy that was dropped in 2006. I remember having a CD. I remember my mom having a CD back in 2006 when that album dropped. We fucking burnt that CD all the way out. That damn CD had nothing but scratches on the back of that motherfucker. <laughs> we played that shit to death. That was the album with uh, Runaway Love on that motherfucker. So y'all yep. know Runaway Love was a banger. So shout out slap, Kiki like Palmer. Slap. Yeah, shout out Kiki for <laughs> sure. That video still is crazy. But uh, yeah, definitely slap by Ludacris. All right, man. And moving on to movie and show reviews. What we got coming up? Yeah, Quincy just told me he just saw The Barbarian. Um, I yes. definitely want to see that. So I got to see The Barbarian. Uh, It's another couple. It's a lot of, of good shit coming up this weekend see. too. The 23rd. Shit is dropping. Don't worry, yeah. dog. Smile Ooh, drops. Don't on worry, the, darling. That was the name Smile of the Smile come out on the 30th or on the 23rd, too. Smile come out, too. Yeah, so, bro. Um, I'm like, over a, the next couple of weekends, there's some shit dropping. I'm a month and a half at least behind on movies, bro. So I definitely got to go. We we still got to do Prade. Uh, the first Avatar is back in theaters this weekend. I've so seen that. All of y'all prepping to see Avatar 2 in December who have not seen the original, please go see that. She Hulk, uh, we just. Ooh, did we just record for episodes four and five? Three and four. Ago? Three and four. So mm -hmm. we'll have um, reactions to episodes five and six next week. So keep a lookout for that. Full season, Raising Canaan review. One season two is over. And we got a lot of other movies coming for y'all as the year comes to a close as we approach the fourth quarter. And hey, it's some fire-ass movies dropping, bro. It's some fire movies, especially over this next couple of months. So definitely stay tuned. Like I had told Edgar, definitely tap into that Barbarian. If you watched the trailer and weren't really in tune with it, the trailer really has nothing to do with what the movie is really about. I felt <laughs> like that, bro. I felt like, like that they, shit, They bro. really, because the trailer is really like the first part of the movie, but they go in a, not really a separate direction, but they just dive deeper into something, like the more the movie goes on. So I think mm -hmm. people will fuck with it. And if y'all look at the Rotten Tomatoes, I think when I looked at it, it was like 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Damn. Like it has very high reviews so definitely Damn, they that. must have took a complete left turn and shot <laughs> everybody <laughs> no, it, was, it was definitely a dope turn bro it was definitely that's why i want to want us to review it but uh anything yeah. else bro nah that's it all right man we appreciate you guys for listening and we out peace